this is uh, two years down the road. Uh, I think it's good that we're proactive here and trying to uh, look at uh, measures so that uh, not only we can plan for excessive use on our county roads and that part of Lincoln County, but uh, if there's uh, any other way that we can work with the state uh, in uh, helping us not only uh, to find uh, alternative routes, but uh, hopefully maybe even some compensation. Very good. Madam Chair, I have two, uh, two things. Uh, one is a rather sad note. We have our state association uh, present executive director Bob Wilcox is undergoing cancer surgery as we speak and his able assistant um, Chris Jacobson um, had her father pass away quite suddenly mm. so I was uh, I get, you get to know these people and, and and it's rather sad and difficult uh, if you have if you're a praying face our praying praying person Chalk one up for Bob. The other thing I, I, I had Sean give you is the latest overview of the how we can spend our money that we are getting from uh, the uh, COVID situation. And it goes into detail as to where we can apply those funds and, and what recording that we have to give back to the Treasury on how we have spent those. And there appears to be somewhat of a, uh, I think, misunderstanding or maybe a too broad of interpretation because of the $11 million that Lincoln County gets, what we can spend it on. And um, I know Yankton County is anticipating spending it on roads and bridges, but it explicitly says that you really can't do that but we can spend it on water and sewer projects and other things. In case anybody in the audience wants to go, all you have to do is go to NACO, National Association of Counties, and you look under local government and you will find the same rules that, that are right here. And um, you can see that uh, it limits us because we could certainly use the money uh, on buildings and expanding and other things, but we are somewhat hampered on what those monies can be applied to. So anyway, I just thought for own, their own edification. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, item one on our regular business, uh, second reading in public hearing. This is the second reading and public hearing for an ordinance of Lincoln County, South Dakota, rezoning the property legally described as portion approximately 10 acres, north half and northwest quarter, except H1 and N and north 211 and a half feet of east 412 feet, section 33 township 100 north, R49 West from A1 Agricultural District to the C Commercial District and amending the official zoning map of Lincoln County. The Planning Commission recommendation for approval failed zero to five. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Toby Brown representing County Planning. Uh, the applicant for this item is Matt Roach of Pride Built Homes. Uh, subject, again, the subject parcel would be 10 acres out of a 75 acre parcel. Um, property is at the intersection of 272nd and South Dakota Highway 11. This is approximately a mile to the east of the city of Harrisburg. Uh, the applicant did submit a concept plan with the application. Uh, the intention is to subdivide the property into eight lots that would be utilized for uh, contractor shops. Uh, the first one being Pride Built Homes, which is the applicant. Um, this property is within the subdivision authority of the city of Harrisburg. Uh, so there is no accompanying preliminary plan with this. That will be approved by the city of Harrisburg. Uh, so the county does not have jurisdiction over the drainage uh, grading plan or any site development improvements here. Uh, as noted in the staff report, uh, this application is not compliant with the Lincoln County Comprehensive Plan uh, because the Lincoln County Comprehensive Plan identifies this as future agricultural property. However, the city of Harrisburg has adopted an updated comprehensive plan and they have identified this as future light industrial area. Uh, so the proposal to commercial would be less intensive than what's identified. 
um, by the city. I'll try to find that for you. Of note is, is that uh, this property is surrounded by agricultural property. Uh, the nearest uh, dwelling is approximately 500 feet. This is Wayne and Ellis Bramstead, this residence right here. Uh, Wayne is the brother of the property owner of this property here. Um, the nearest commercial property to this would be further up on South Dakota Highway 11 within the joint jurisdictional area. Again, Planning Commission uh, recommendation for approval failed uh, zero to five. With that, we have to answer any questions that you have for staff at this time. What were the areas of concern at the Planning Commission meeting? Uh, drainage which again, uh, the county doesn't have any jurisdiction over because this is within the city of Harrisburg subdivision authority. Uh, second would be uh, Wayne and Alice. I've had discussions with them in the past. Uh, this application was brought before you a year ago uh, for the same item. They did, however, move the driveway a little bit to the east and they did uh, incorporate more drain or detention on the site. Um, but uh, their concern was this would be more of a spot zone, uh, that there, would, there is no commercial property within the vicinity. Staff recommendation was to approve, correct? Correct. Does anybody else have any questions for staff? If not, is the applicant here? Uh, come on up. State your name and address and tell us what you want to do. Could I request to speak last um, with all those that are in favor? Um, you want to speak after the people I in favor? I want to speak after everybody in favor, if that would I guess you're in okay. one of the people in favor of it, so I'm fine with that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody here to speak in favor of the application? My name's Dan Devine. I live at 27094 Deer Hollow Court, Harrisburg. Morning, Dan. Morning. Go ahead. Uh, I am in favor of this development. I believe this will be a premier business location for Harrisburg and Southeast Sioux Falls. Our personal business will be located at the northwest corner of this property. We're a luxury home builder that holds high standard to our product and works uh, and who works for us. We'll have an HOA for this development that will hold uh, owners of this development to the same high standard we will be requiring at all preliminary build, sorry, we will be uh, requiring all buildings to have a preliminary uh, site plan and uh, elevations of the buildings uh, to be submitted prior to construction. We'll be requiring landscaping and nice buildings we have done our homework on engineering the water on this property to not interfere downstream properties. We spoke with neighboring landowners that want our, about what our plans are happening with this water. I feel very confident we can move forward with this development and address any concerns along the way. We'll be neighbors with these people and want to, a good relationship moving forward. Thank you. Also, I have a letter from a person that will be buying one of the properties. Okay. Would it be okay to read that? Did you want to read that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, It'll be go very ahead. slow because I suck at speaking in front of people. <laughs> That's, it. That's all right. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> uh, his name is Yuri Shishik, Shishinik. He's Ukrainian, and I can't understand what his last name actually is, but I can. it is Y-U-R-I-S-U-S-H-C-H-I-K. Uh, in his letter, he says, hello, and thank you for taking the time to hear from me. My name is Yuri, and I am the owner of Elite Builders in Sioux Falls. I have a business. I have been in business building homes for the past 14 years, and I'm always looking for great opportunities to expand my business and a better community of, and better the community of Sioux Falls and surrounding area. With this rezoning of the property, businesses like myself have a chance to expand. It'll bring more jobs and opportunities for small businesses to grow. I have worked with Pride Build Homes in the past and personally know how detailed and beautiful their work is. Oftentimes, commercial buildings are thought to take away from the landscape of the area, but I know that the work that Pride Built does will only add so much, both visually and economically. I look forward to expanding my business and seeing other businesses have this opportunity with the rezoning of this property. Thank you again for the time to listen to a fellow community member. Thank you. 
Thanks. Go ahead, come on up. My name is Larry Betts. I am the owner of this type of property. And we did have a meeting last night with the opposing group of uh, citizens. And what was brought to my attention, which we are absolutely trying to work with, would be the drainage. We definitely do not want any on-scene problems with this main property. And we are working with them, hopefully that they will understand that. Um, as far as the other concerns, citizens, what I've noticed is more the concern about changing the environment around that community. I don't feel that a small industrial area like this will really have a bearing on the traffic because the people who are working there will be leaving at five and coming at seven to eight in the morning, roughly two dozen vehicles. Now in my vision of things, and uh, you guys can question my vision, but if it had to be built at Canton, would it be wiser that they have to travel that much farther since they're in a local community right there? Would also increase traffic over a longer period of time and a longer distance. My brother also sent the letter through texting, and I would like to read that if that's at all possible. If there's any questions that you guys would like to ask me, I'd be more than willing to answer. Thank you. Why don't you go ahead and read your letter that you okay. have. Sometimes they're um, not conducive to being very easy. Here's my letter to the commissioner's meeting. Good evening. Well, this was planned to be this tonight instead of today, so I have to change that to good morning. I'm Myron Bramsey. Sorry I'm unable to attend tonight's meeting. I'm in Missouri. I own a South Dakota half of the quarter being considered for commercial development, which is only 10 acres. I hope you will consider approving this land for a few reasons. Approving this land for commercial use will benefit more than the buyer and the sellers. It will benefit the landowners around it by increasing property values. It will increase tax revenue by having more people paying taxes to the community, which more money for new schools, which we all know will be happening in the past as the area is growing. It will improve the water problem on the land I am totally convinced that the buyer's pride home built, pride built homes, excuse me, are totally committed to managing and water problems that the neighbors are experiencing when there are heavy rains and the satisfaction of the neighbors. These are the reasons that I ask that you prove the given buyers a chance to prove themselves. Thank you, Mayor and Bramstead. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Any of you commissioners have any questions? Uh, when you said you've been working with people on drainage issues, what what are you what have you done, or what are you proposing? We basically just did planning so far, and we're willing to continue to do the planning and such that it doesn't flood the neighbors. Um, the real, the true drainage of this land would go through sminks, and we definitely want to work with sminks to make sure that it doesn't cause any problems with them. Uh, the meeting last night, there was other people talking about drainage, but that land is a high point and it goes a tile system now through Lake Alvin. And the only place it drains through is through Merlin Smink's property, which is he is deceased, so it would be his wife and his son. It would be the more if appropriate people that would be of concern. His brother Norm has been talking to us and we haven't really come to a real decision yet. We are working with planning to try to make it feasible so everybody will be acceptable to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair. Toby, would you put that first picture up, up there and leave that up there, please? Is there anybody else here to speak in favor? Thank you. Of the application? Hi, just state your name and address, please. Cameron Rasmussen, 914 Woodmont Avenue, Harrisburg, South Dakota. 
Um, I have known Matt and Dan for six years and um, actually have used their company to build my current home or future home, I guess. I'm going to be moving in, in August. Um, I would just like to speak on the behalf of the company it, that it's always such a pleasure working with them. They always go the extra mile to make sure that not only the client is happy, but also the community. They're heavily integrated in Harrisburg and the surrounding community and making sure that it's a better life for all surrounding them. They take pride in their buildings and how they appear and also the um, upkeep of the land when they are building and the facility when they use it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm Mike Ramstead, Murray's son. I also own an adjoining 12 acres um, right there that I've recently purchased from my uncle. Um, I'm, I'm not one that rehash things over and over, everything that's important that has already been said. So the one thing I'm going to say is one of the things that I've learned in my 20 years of military service is that people who are more adaptable to change are the ones that can be the most successful. Some people want change. Some people don't want change. The ones that are wanting change are wanting to bring better lives for themselves, their businesses, their families, the community. Okay, people who don't want change are the ones that want it to stay exactly the same. We live in a world where there has to be change. That's just the way it is. Thank you, ma'am, for your time. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak in favor of the application? Morning. Good morning. This is a little nerve-wracking standing up here. You guys are... <laughs> Don't be nervous at all. Just state, state, state your name and address and let us know uh, okay. what you have to say. Okay. Danielle Konechny, 1714 South 1st Avenue, Sioux Falls. I am the realtor for Pride Built Homes, and I have been working with them over the last five years since they began their company. As their realtor, I could not be more proud of representing the product and the quality that they build. Whenever they uh, go into a development, they add an extreme amount of value to that neighborhood and to that community. And it's because of the product that they build. So they went from not having a name as a builder in this community to being one of the top luxury builders in Sioux Falls. So that just attests to the product that they put forward every day. If I were going to be somebody that lived in that neighborhood, I'd want somebody with that type of reputation putting in a product in my neighborhood so you could control the quality of what's going in over there. The other uh, thing is, is they're, they've always been very innovative. They're a very innovative company and we're very active in the Home Builders Association. This would provide a solution for many home builders that are looking for this type of, of product. Um, we get requests all the time from home builders finding something like this for them, and there's nothing available. So I think that provides a really good solution for a lot of builders who, in this market, are having a tough time anyway, you know, um, and that would just provide some relief for them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Matt Metzger, 600 Doug's, Douglas Fir, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57110. I've been a uh, Pride Built's banker for eight years, but I've known Matt for 20 years. And I guess not to rehash what everybody's been saying today, but um, I'm just going to say ditto because they put a lot of pride and effort into their product. Um, this has been a vision of Matt's for, well, as long as I've been his bank eight or 10 years. And, and so I just know that they don't, they don't do anything half ass, I guess is what I want to say. They, they, they um, if anybody went to the Prada homes last weekend and, and walked through their house, you'll see the detail and the, uh, um, the vision and, and ju just seeing what they do at, um, on their homes. I know they're going to put the same amount of pride and effort into this product or project. And so, um, I hope to see it come to fruition, and I know that they will do uh, their best to keep everybody happy and, and work on all the issues that need to be addressed. So, thank you. Thank you. My name is Shane Simmons. I live at 500 Cottonwood Drive in Harrisburg, South Dakota. 
I've known Matt and Dan for many years and I believe that this would be a great project for the community. Uh, they do have high standards and I think they would do the best work for the drainage issues if there is any and have a very quality building there. So hope it gets approved. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak in favor of the application? I'm Scott Stearns, 4612 South Klein Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, I'm here. I work for Fisher Sisters Real Estate. I'm uh, one of the brokers and office managers, and I've got to know Matt and Dan over the last um, few years um, working with them. I will absolutely um, attest to the testaments that everybody else uh, of the quality that they do build, um, the attention to detail that they do. Uh, in their work, they take, you know, it's it's in their name. I mean, it's kind of, I don't want to be sounding cliche, but pride built. It, they do take absolute 100% pride in the uh, work that they do. And that's not just finishing work, that's site work. That's um, making sure that the, the site is impeccable, um, aesthetically pleasing, um, and I just know with this and with this development that they're going to uh, that they're going to do is they're going to put the same effort uh, and quality into that. So I really do hope that this does get approved for them. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew Roach, 284 Tiger Way. Um, like everybody has said here, we never go into anything uh, knowing that it's just going to be a breeze. We are always open to conversations and the hard conversation. I know the the neighboring uh, landowners around this property, we had a meeting last night. It started off with uh, drainage issues. Um, with the time that we've sat down with Harrisburg, we've pulled up all the drainage, where water goes, what water goes to what person's land, where it goes back, and where its final destination is. Um, Dan and myself have obsessed over this piece of property because we don't ever want there to be a problem for anybody downstream. Um, like Larry said, the pr all of the water runs through Myron's land, and then it runs through Smink's land. Norm Smink and his, I believe it's son-in-law, Ryan Smink, are not opposed to this. They just want to make sure that they're not getting somebody else's problem. They have been amazing men to work with, uh, very open conversations, a bunch of hypothetical conversations have been had. Um, everybody has an opinion on this piece of property, and clearly we're for it. But if you completely pull every person's opinion out of it, and you simply talk about the landowners that are directly in contact with that piece of property, there are 11 landowners. There are two in opposition. There are four that are fully vocally for it. And there are seven that are completely indifferent. We have not heard a word for them, for or against. And I believe that their silence speaks louder than, than saying nothing at all. I don't know what we can do to get an approval today from you. Um, we're not the type of people that are going to walk into this, purchase this land, develop this land, sell it, take the money, and run. Our business is going to be here. We're going to be on this site. We're not a five-day-a-week business. We're a seven-day-a-week business. We're going to be on this site seven days a week. Uh, Dan and myself are both members of Harrisburg. We live here. We spend our money here. We eat here. Our children go to school here. It looks as if we're just these Sioux Falls contractors that are coming into a community and, and completely ruining it. But this is, this is our community also. And we want to make it better. We want to make it aesthetically pleasing to look at, people to be proud to live across the street from it. And like Toby had said, this is light industrial. We're not looking to have this light industrial, looking to have this commercial. These are eight to five businesses. All eight of those lots are pre-sold should you guys approve this. They're all businesses that work with us and people that we want to surround our business because we're going to be right on the corner of that property. Um, we have full approval from the city of Harrisburg. They love the fact that this property has been engineered not one time, it's been engineered twice because we went back and we heard the concerns of the opposing members and we redesigned it. We put more water retention. We worked with Aaron Norman to figure out how to slow the water and to improve the water downstream of these landowners. Um, 
Is there any questions from you guys? I um, can you I, just tell us a little bit about how you're going to police the appearance? Uh, um, we have 3D renderings of our shop. Um, we want to set it, police it as in how it's going to look. Well, I'm sure your facility is going to look very nice, but the contractors that are going to be yep. using these and you know whether they're purchased or renting them, how that's going to be policed so there's not sure it doesn't get like it looks like. You know, a salvage Garbage. yard or something. Absolutely. So because our our establishment is going to be there, we'll set up this community like an HOA. There'll be an uh, architectural committee, which will start off as just Dan and myself, and the architectural approvals. So somebody can't come in and just put a building in. Uh, just like a neighborhood in Sioux Falls, just like a neighborhood in uh, Harrisburg, the developer has approval or denial based off of simply aesthetics of the property and we hold a very high standard probably higher than any other developer because we are a luxury home builder thank you anybody else have any questions if not then we'll go ahead and hear from people who would like to speak in opposition and madam chair i have a couple questions oh, go oh. ahead so matt if i understand correctly it's going to be all contractor shops on the site right yes sir okay have the HOA rules been designed yet? They have not because based off of your guys' approval or denial, should you approve, we go back to Harrisburg and they set complete standards of is it paved, how is it paved, is there curb and gutter, you know, is there a single holding tank or is there multiple? Uh, it, they essentially give us the roadmap of what they're approving and then they'll approve the HOA that's set forth. Do you have copies of the renderings or drawings? I do. Can we take a look at them? Absolutely. <laughs> Hello. Well, maybe I can turn it. No. This is a side view, front view, the other side. We like to look to see what they look like at night also, so we do a night rendering. Matt, a question looking at that. Is there outdoor storage or anything around there that you have, or are you buffering anything with fences, or what kind of other aesthetic we, landscaping are you doing? So we're going to require landscaping. We are going to require a certain amount of grass out front, so it's, there's a nice soft feel there. Yeah. Um, Dan and I have talked about this in depth. It's almost as if you're danged if you do, you're danged if you don't put fences up. It's almost better to not allow fences because when fences are there, people think it hides mm -hmm. stuff. So our request would be that there is no fence um, unless, of course, it's uh, storing stuff like their work trucks and such, and they just want to keep them safe. So we're going to have to put the verbiage and the wordage correct in the HOA so people aren't stacking garbage there. The nice thing is we can set up a board, too. And once all eight of those lots are full, each person will have a seat at the, a chair at the board. And if one of these people are collecting garbage, the other seven could vote to have that site cleaned up, and if they don't, they'll be in penalty of the HOA. So these lots are approximately one acre? 1.1 1. Acre 1 acres. 1.1. 1. 1. Yes, sir. Matt, with regard to the drainage issues, what kind of water retention or detention are you doing on site? I'd like Aaron Norman to speak to that. He's our engineer. Um, I don't want to speak to it and give you false information. I'm, that's way out of my league. 
That's something you'll work with the city with, I'm also assuming. Absolutely. Since they have jurisdiction over that. Absolutely. We've actually sat down with Aaron. We requested that it be engineered in the manner that it's over-engineered, that there will be no problems. I have personally had water in my basement due to a neighborhood that had improper drainage. And once you have that, you do have PTSD to water and you're hypersensitive to it. This is something that we're not going to push and make another person's problem. I've lived it. Dan lived it, so many people have. That's not what we're looking to do here. We want to improve on every aspect of this. Thank you. We're gonna move on to people that would like to speak uh, against the application. You wanna step up and state your name and address? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Norm Smink is my name. I live at 47774. I think there's three sevens in there, but on 273rd Street. Um, my uh, sister-in-law and his, her son are basically the land owners now of the property to the south of this proposed development. Uh, I appreciate the uh, discussions that we've had with Matt and Dan. Um, I guess uh, my nephew couldn't be here this morning. Uh, he had some emergency came up. He expressed to me the concern is that, uh, yes, they are concerned about water, but what is, what is going to be done? And if it gets approved as a uh, commercial rezoning, uh, then maybe the issues of water, maybe it goes to Harrisburg, I don't know. Maybe it gets pushed to the next development in that area and the next development, and pretty soon you got a big problem of water runoff and it all goes through his land. And uh, <clears throat> I have dealt with uh, the city of Harrisburg uh, when the uh, Nielsen development on the northeast corner of Harrisburg was taking place. And the engineer says there's no more water coming off a housing development than there is land. And all of us farmers just kind of rolled our eyes and said, well, we don't have a chance. And <clears throat> I can show you, I, I didn't know you had the capability, otherwise I'd have taken some pictures along where it shows half of my farm underwater after a big rain and losing crops, losing topsoil. And uh, we don't want that to continue to happen in any future, future developments. Um, I guess that's our major concern, the water runoff. Mr. Smink, I have a question for you. How is the siting of the development going to uh, exacerbate the drainage issue? Well, <clears throat> um, all of that land drains south, and that's where my nephew and my sister-in-law's land is. Whether it's through tile lines, there are some tile lines there. A lot of them are very old. Uh, operating at probably maximum 25% capacity. And so you have a lot of retained water over a, a period of time where crops drown out, uh, either that or it stays in a, a uh, pond, slough. Mr. Bramstead was saying earlier that they were doing planning for this uh, to take care of these water issues. Has that resulted in any concrete plans or is it just talk? Just some, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I talked about a pipe, a culvert. I don't know how huge that would have to be. Uh, buried under my nephew's ground. We talked about a swale or grass waterway um, is that going to how deep does that have to be in order to drain that corner uh, I don't think any of that has been determined yet and uh, will that 
grass waterway be able to be driven across for farm equipment or is it going to be something that is going to be a obstruction in the middle of the field that we've got to turn around and somehow get around to the back side of the field is that who, at whose expense would that be done at good question I assume they would have to be an easement and the only thing I've been involved with is an easement is a Dakota access pipeline and they bought an easement to put their pipeline through some of my property not in this general area but they paid the easement at the going rate of land at that time are you is your property outside of Harrisburg city limits yes okay so the Harrisburg City Council doesn't represent you no but they're the ones who will decide the drainage issue. I assume so because they have the uh, jurisdiction within the three mile radius of the city limits. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in opposition to the application? I'm, my name's Lane Bramstead. I live right across from this, this uh, proposal. Um, and I've lived there for 48 years. And during that time, I've had water issues with the city of Harrisburg. Uh, when they started building all the houses there, the, the water comes down through my pasture and it would flood, flood 20, 22 to 28 acres of my crop ground and pasture. Um, I went around to different ones at the city level and to and county level, and because uh, Highway 11 is a, r operated and run by the DOT, there was nothing they could do about the building a bigger culvert to to so let the water escape, or, so it just backed up onto my property. This. It, but when it did back up, it uh, it went across the road, washed the road out, went out, went south into my neighbor's property, and then down into Norm's, and then back down through that this waterway that they're talking about to the lake, and the water was pretty putrid. It was like sewer water. But anyway, um, that and the fact that I live right across the from this property and uh, I feel that this this building this industrial park is going to kind of ruin the sale of my property as a as a farm uh, I that farm I built that farm up myself all put every building on it except one um, and and I have I got neighbors to the east of me that uh, travel that road every day and they don't want uh, this building site to uh, cause more stress than that towards the, the traffic on Highway 11. Getting on and off in it is what their main concern is. And um, I've got their names on a piece of paper. Uh, they signed the paper that said they were against this proposal. There's 29 of them. And I guess that's all. I, I would, uh, I would hope that the that the, the commission would uh, take into consideration myself and my neighbors when voting on this. Uh, if we're not in favor of it, uh, I believe it'd be better off if they would find another spot closer to where there is sewer and and that sort of thing. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Anyone else here to speak in opposition? Good morning. I'm Yoon Shield. I live at 27225 South Dakota Highway 11, right to the, across uh, Highway 11 to the west of this corner. Um, we have 150 some acres right there. My husband and I got this, bought this farm in 1982. He's passed away in. 2019. I wish he was here today because he understands this a lot better than um, I do. 
And my main concern, again, is the water issue. He says that it all goes through sinks and that, but I can tell you from experience, when we get a heavy rain, there's two culverts from the Bramstead field, not necessarily right where there's 10 acres, but I get a lot of their water also because it's on a low area where these culverts are, or the culverts would not have been there. And I, I have nothing against them at all or their business. I'm sure they do a fine job. I just don't think this is the place that we want to have it. And I'm also curious when we met before, Larry had not paid the taxes on this property. And I was just wondering if that has been uh, resolved. Okay. Any Thank questions? On, I mean, I, I feel that I take a real pride in my place, even though it's gotten more difficult for me. But I want to stay there. I don't want to have all this commercial that they're saying is going to be developed from Harrisburg, that they want to come east now. I'm not ready to give up my farmland or my uh, income that I get from that. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Anybody else? Good morning. Nikki Ramsey. I live at 47930 Copperwood Circle. Um, I live in a development just about a mile east of this property. There's my development and there's also another development. We have about 16 homes in our development and there's a new development being built um, right in front of us, west of us, that's out there as well. Um, I'm also a realtor. I moved here about six years ago and my husband and I um, bought our property because we liked that it wasn't surrounded by commercial. And I do recognize growth happens. And in the six years I've lived here, things have grown a lot. Um, but as a property owner, seeing this start to happen in this area, I question why. And does this make sense for this location? As a realtor, I recognize the standards that Pride Belt has. I do not question that whatsoever. Um, what I question is, is this right for this location? And is it, does it make sense for the area. Do they need these properties? Sure, but should it be here? It doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. We do this 10 acres, and then what does it lead to? It's just gonna kinda open that can of worms. We live just north of the Lake Alvin there where you see Oak Ridge Drive. That's our development. And then just across from that, it probably doesn't show up yet because it's a brand new development, but just in that um, farm, you, oh, that's the new development, yes, thank you. So I live in the area just behind that where the Oak Ridge area is. Um, most of my neighbors do disagree with having this. We don't want to have commercial property. Yes, a mile seems like a long ways away, but when you live rurally, it's not. We have three entrances to our development. The area here where he's planning to build, um, just north of that there on uh, 271st, and then just south of that there at Lake Alvin at 273rd. So this is a highly uh, visible area for our development and those of us who come and go every day. We do con concerns about traffic. We just have concerns overall about the general use of the land and whether or not this is appropriate for this location and this area. And I know that they have done their due diligence with the, with the owners of the property adjacent to and touching the property, but um, my husband is the <coughs> HOA president of our development and no one has come and discussed any um, community plans with us and let us know what's going to be laid out. And I think that as a community member, that would be something that would have gone a long way to come knocking on our doors and say, this is what we're looking to do just outside your neighborhood in a rural community. Um, and at least try to give us some information and help us better understand. But my overall concern at the end of the day is it's just 10 acres today. I'm sure it will be beautifully built. I'm sure it will be great but then what comes next? And as a community and a development in a neighborhood with families and children who just wanna live a quiet, peaceful, somewhat rural um, life, this is somewhat or very concerning for us and our property values moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Darrell Leonards. I live at 47931 Oak Ridge Place, Harrisburg. I live in the same development that Nikki does. I don't think anybody's questioning the quality of work they do. I don't think anybody's questioning 
the type of company that they are and, and who to represent. I think the biggest issue here really has to do with should it be rezoned at this point in time? Is, is the time right to go from ag to commercial and why? And are there not other commercial sites available in Harrisburg with the infrastructure already in place? Planning Commission, when I was at their meeting, voted it down 5 nothing for a couple of reasons. One is the concern with traffic. Two, the whole issue of just is now the time to rezone. Three, and we talked about it here, and, and they've done a lot better, I think, and that's the drainage issue. But the commission at that time asked them to meet with the adjacent property owners, come up with a plan and approve it. Now, it sounds like they met last night and have a start but I don't think they have a plan that's been agreed upon. So I just don't know now if the time is right until at least that part happens in defense of the people who have their property owners. I'm not as concerned from a drainage issue. I'm more concerned just from a commercial development standpoint. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Anybody else would like to speak uh, in opposition? And I just ask that we um, not repeat everything. You know, if there's other people, don't. I don't want to rehash the same thing over and over again. All right, seeing none. Um, Matt, do you, do you or does anybody with you want to come up and address um, anything that was brought forward and the people that spoke in opposition? Specifically the traffic, the traffic issue I'd like to hear about and I think the board would appreciate that um, as well as um, any more specifics that you have about the drainage issues going forward? Go hey, good, mo good morning, Aaron Norman, 3800 West 53rd Street, Sioux Falls, the civil engineer surveyor for Matt on this project. Um, I can make Matt, Matt talk a little bit more what he thinks the traffic will be um, with his proposed tenants. And uh, I can speak a little bit more on our drainage and kind of the design we laid out and presented to the uh, Planning Commission. Um, just to note, Matt's looking at buying 10 acres here. Um, of that, 0.75 acres will be road right away to the north that we can't do anything with. And there'll be about 2.1 acres of pond around the perimeter. So we're leaving about a little over seven acres of actual probably usable ground for these buildings. Um, in analyzing the site, we did a topo survey of the site, figured out where the drainage patterns are going today. Um, like everybody said, it does want to go south down along the highway right away to a low spot where a culvert crosses Highway 11. Um, the site right now is partially row crop, some upland grasses, and there's some fill material in there. So we kind of analyzed what that drainage model does today and generated a flow that comes from the site as it exists today. Using that information, we took our proposed design and figured out, you know, we're going to have a little over seven acres of impervious at potential, what's that increase in runoff do? Where do we gotta slow down? So we designed that and then doing one large linear pond at the bottom, we kind of wrapped it around the site. It gives everybody on that, those lots a place to outlet their drainage and so they don't flood their neighbors. And that pond, like I said, has got a footprint overall filling about two acres. Um, we did that, slowing the water down. I think uh, we had a, a proposed like a 30 inch pipe and it's relatively flat, site's flat, so it's at a half percent. And uh, instead of, you know, we talked about maybe a couple discharge points, but we figured if we're gonna have this confined water, just get it close to the right away ditch, away from the field as much as possible. Um, like I said, Larry owns the parent parcel of this, and that's kind of how we talked with him on uh, proposed drainage. Uh, plans were submitted to City of Harrisburg. They had, a, you know, some comments. It's more of the development, and we'll address those, you know, as we get through the preliminary plan phase with Harrisburg if this is approved. Um, I know one of the comments was the traffic, moving that access approach far east as possible away from Highway 11 to keep the turning movements and traffic patterns, you know, away from that intersection. Um, I guess back to the drainage, the site up there at the intersection, 272nd Highway 11, that's kind of the high spot, spot of the site. There's no culvert underneath 272nd. The water wants to run, work its way south. Um, I guess with that, anybody have any questions with the drainage? Anybody have any questions? I do have a question, Madam Chair. Uh, go ahead. Um, addressing the drainage question, you, you're holding about two acres and metering that out. 
will that two acres completely drain once allowed to do so? Right. It's a, yeah, a detention pond, so we do have a release rate on that, yeah. And then uh, on a uh, how long will it take to release through the pipe, do you know? It's relatively flat bottom. We don't have much slope there. It's about at a half percent best. So it's going to come out slow, but it's release rate of, I think it's 40 hours. And then on the dis discharge outside of that property then, is it going into what I refer to as a blue line, which is a dedicated channel? We're trying to get it towards the ditch of the, of. Uh, and, and will of it stay in? And we have had this situation over the years as municipality have grown and stuff where, we're, where yes, the detention uh, is developed, but then it drains slowly instead of a, a wash off. So then that farm land or whatever property is not usable for a period of time versus just being a couple of days after a rain event. So I guess my question, you're, you're doing a great job at trying to do a lot of the engineering for the drainage, but then we need to address when it leaves there, what effect. Um, and am I incorrect in, in stating that we're not quite there as having that that pipe or something that was discussed by a couple members develop completely where it won't affect downstream? Um, Right, I know they're often may refer to Matt and the owner on that. I wasn't involved in those conversations. You're not involved with that. So okay, all right, thank you for your answer. Uh, Aaron, where's the current discharge point? It'd be on the southwest corner of the proposed development. And where would it discharge on, onto? Uh, Larry's property. Okay, and uh, okay, got it. Toby, can you pull back up the map? Yeah. Uh, uh, that shows uh, floodplain. So if I understand right, Aaron, the discharge point's gonna be kind of uh, right there where that uh, number 11 is that shows, uh, you know, Highway 11. Is that the discharge uh, point or is it It'll be north side? further. About there in yeah. the middle. Okay, all right. And it discharges into the public right of way, the ditch? It'll follow, go onto Larry's ground and follow the grade down to the low spot there. But in the ditch that's on the side of the road, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Aaron, this surrounds your entire entire property. Is that uh, holding pond concept goes around the entire all four corners or whatever? Pretty much, yep. What's the depth of that? So in a big rainfall event, we have stop me. three foot. Two feet. Three foot, three foot from the bottom to the top, yep. question is what in discussion maybe you can answer this in discussion with you you um, I think Norm mentioned many different options has there been any uh, concrete idea on a uh, grassway or added uh, added tiling or anything to alleviate the water when it does come out of this pipe so that it doesn't, as Commissioner Poppin says, sits, because it is a flat area, and it doesn't want to drain very well. But is there any um, major discussion that you've really solidified around or anything like that? Do you have preferences, having listened to the Schmates, or for yourself, as a matter of fact? Because I do believe, you know, you're trying to be a good neighbor here, so. But I mean, has there been any plan that has been come forward 
that has taken a priority over another. If you want, yeah. That's not a question directed at Aaron. Well, man, it started with Matt. He's the engineer. Okay. Although he went to and state. And that's not uh, your anyway, question. Yeah. That's not your question, is it? Anyway. So who wants to address that question? Yeah, who wants, Matt or whoever? Come on up, Matt. Um, we're going to go about uh, three more minutes, and we're going to um, end the public hearing. So. so I can speak to the future drainage. Um, that's things that we will have to work with these landowners if they would work with us in future developments. Um, the 10 acres that is designed right now is designed to release this water into the area it is currently going right now at a slower rate, slowing down the water downstream currently. So we're actually improving water flow to all neighbors, Myron, Mike, and the Sminks at this point with the current engineering on this, this property. Um, distance for communication. Uh, we had never done a rezoning previous to this. And based off of the commission's suggestion to reach out to neighboring properties, we thought that that was immediate neighboring properties. So listening to them say we should have came to them. I agree we probably should have gone to that neighborhood. We just didn't know in what distance we should be traveling away from this to have these conversations. Uh, so we would have definitely gone to the president of that OHOA and had a conversation because Cameron uh, Rasmussen, she is actually in the neighborhood that is just south of the neighborhood that they live in. Um, she is for the, the rezone. Um, this area, there was a lot of concern about should this be commercial? Is the timing right? What will this land be? It is already pre-zoned, pre-annexed by the city of Harrisburg as light industrial. That is worst case scenario for land and property. We are proposing to have this be commercial and Harrisburg tells us that when land does rezone commercial, all the property around it increases in value, whether it be a farm or just bare land, the property itself increases. <clears throat> and as far as traffic goes, we work and build in this neighborhood currently. We've done one, we finished that one, we do an another, we're talking with two more property owners, so the impact of more, pro more traffic in that area is zero, because the people that are looking to purchase this already work in this neighborhood and are already driving on that road and using those facilities. So there's no more traffic. We're there five days a week currently going in and out. Our subcontractors are going in and out of that road currently right now. So the impact of more traffic, there's not going to be any more. The people that work on our projects are the people that are looking to purchase these other seven lots. All right, thank you. Um, commissioners, um, at this point, I would like to close the public hearing and entertain a motion to approve the rezone. I'll move to motion to approve. Is there a second? Madam Chair, I believe the motion fails. Well, just... <coughs> Is anyone considering seconding the motion? Well, I think I'll, we should have our discussion amongst ourselves. Everybody sits here mute. Well, I'm just looking for yeah. the motion. I will se we'll I'll second it for discussion. <coughs> Thank you. Because I do you. think we got to air this thing. So let's, uh, let's everybody speak up. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Well, I'd like to hear from the commissioners where they, what, what they think. I mean, we all can sit here. You know, I'll just express here. I know, I know the concerns that the, the neighbors have. I know the concerns that if you live in a rural area and you had a development, maybe the, um, the um, uh, drainage issue can be addressed. I think you can, you can work on that. You can work on drainage and find ways to slow down water and, and stuff, whether it's tiling or all that kind of stuff. And, that, and now we are praying for rain in these days. 
The question is, is this a proper place? Because um, we look at it, if you live in a home or in a development, do you want to see commercial come in to that area? Because granted, it may increase. Now, we look at it from the standpoint from the city of Harrisburg, they've already rezoned this thing because they want that kind of stuff. Why? Because commercial taxes pay, pay more taxes, support their school system. So you sit here and you evaluate that. So the question is, is this going to be? This area is going to continue to grow whether we turn this down or whether we approve it. It's going to grow. I mean, it is alive. If you look at the future growth plans of Sioux Falls or Harrisburg, this, this, this land is 10 years from now, we won't even recognize it. So consequently, I, I'm sitting here saying, okay, what's the best use? How do we foster? How do we take in all these considerations? So before I cast my vote for or against, I would like to hear from my fellow commissioners what they have to say, because I'm uncomfortable without just sitting here mute. So what do you think? I think at some point, you're right. This is gonna be, it's gonna be something. I don't think it's gonna stay agricultural because it's so close to the city of Harrisburg and has been brought up. Uh, the city of Harrisburg is already in favor of this. It meets their comprehensive plan. Um, it appears to me that the developer uh, wants to work on the drainage issues uh, with the landowners and I don't think he has any ill will there. Um, I, uh, so I'm, I'm for it. Um, so those are my two cents. Since it was my motion, I'm reserving Madam Chair. It's just last if I could. That's okay. I'm good with that. <laughs> Commissioner Aarons? Well, I think Mike Bramstead brought up some interesting comments. He said there's people who want change and there's people who don't want change. But I wouldn't equate people who don't want change with not being successful. Sometimes people don't want change because they're worried that it will harm their property. And here, there's a lack of plans, concrete plans that have been put into effect that can give people the satisfaction they need in order to make change. And the problem we have here is procedurally, the county has to make the decision to rezone, but it's up to an entirely different board as to how the property is going to be governed. And we've asked the city of Harrisburg for a year and a half, two years now, to engage in joint jurisdiction, and they haven't done so. And we've talked with them. Toby and I have talked with them about this. Uh, I want to support the rezone because we need to get on with economic development moving forward. The problem is, is I'm being asked to make a decision uh, that I don't have total control over the consequences. We have to subordinate, subordinate ourselves to another board. And uh, it's like when I asked uh, Mr. Smink, do you live within the city of Harrisburg? Nope, he can't even vote for the people who are gonna make the decision. It's like taxation without representation, right? He's got no influence with those people whatsoever. So the only thing that the people like Mr. Schmink have is to come to this board and say, hey, hold on, guys. I would prefer to make this decision holistically, you know, joint city council meeting with the county commission. Unfortunately, it's just not how the system is set up, and it's wrong. It's, it's wrong for you. It's not fair to you, Mr. Roach, and it's not fair to the people who live out there, and it's not fair to the city um, because we shouldn't be forced to make decisions while wearing handcuffs with a gun to our head. Um, so like I said, if there were more concrete plans, like what Commissioner Schmidt was talking about of working with the neighbors, and I do think... Uh, I, I'm looking at your buildings, they're fantastic. You know, these are not like 
metal pole barn contractor shops. Not at all. Um, do I think that we could adequately protect the uh, housing division to the, to the east? I do. I don't think that this is necessarily spot zoning, uh, given the fact that it's on the highway. Uh, yeah, I understand it's ag land, but if you're within, uh, if you're between Harrisburg and Sioux Falls today, there is a built-in assumption that ag land is going to be sold, as it is in this case, by the Bramsteads. So it's not as if we need to protect farmers and agricultural development, which I think this commission has done a good job of. Um, because, it, because first of all, we got a willing buyer and a willing seller here. So I don't think it's an issue of having to protect ag land or, or whatnot. What I'm concerned about is the drainage issue and what I would like to do is to, is to be able to make this decision in conjunction with the city of Harrisburg. I don't even know if that's possible legally, <laughs> but if I could wave my magic wand, that's what I would do because then I could assure that my vote in support of your rezone would protect the downstream landowners and allow you to be able to do development at the same time. And then also, I think what I would probably do is I'd probably build in some landscaping requirements for you guys, given the fact that there is a housing development. You know, normally you don't see commercial development within a mile of a housing, right? And so I'm talking, how, I'm talking landscaping like berms, trees, and things like that, not just grass and like little one-inch willow trees or something like that on the property, which I kind of think is the direction Lincoln County's going. And I think you guys are here in good faith and you are bending over backwards, but I think the one flawed area we have is this drainage piece. And I don't even know if, if the <coughs> drainage concerns vo voiced by the opponents are as bad as what they say it is. And I don't know if it's, as, if it's gonna be as good as what you say it is, right? But we do have an engineer who just got up here and testified that you know it's two acres of detention. It's gonna meter out at about 40 hours in a heavy rainstorm event. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good testimony and, and hopefully the opponents have listened to that. But um, so the one piece that I wanna get fixed is where is the water gonna go? How are we gonna do it? It's gonna be in a pipe. You just need a permit for the pipe. If we could fix that, I could vote for you hands down today. No thank, problem. Thank you, Commissioner Ahrens. Uh, Commissioner Gibbon, any last word? I agree. The only thing constant in life is change. And, uh, you know, these are changing times for a number of things. However, uh, I do feel the frustration also as an agriculture producer of farming by uh, a nearby metropolitan area of my father-in-law's property, uh, drainage is an issue and it's very frustrating. And uh, I know tiling is helping with many drainage issues and so on and so forth. I guess the concern I have is that our, our planning and zoning basically voted 05 on this. And I just really question if we're far enough along yet in this process right now, today, um, <clears throat> to possibly support this. Thank you. I'll try to keep it brief, Madam Chair. Yeah, it probably <laughs> won't happen, though. Um, I, I want to thank everyone that's came here today. This is awesome, actually, to have people come forth and speak what's on their mind, because rarely do we get to hear this. Um, Mr. Smink, I've known you a long time. You know I farm. You know I feel the same frustration. I don't know exactly how you're enthusiastic you are about change uh, or not, but it's happened over your and my lifetime, and it will continue to do so. So how do we try to prepare and do the best we can? We try to see by, by our mistakes how we can do things better. Um, Mr. Roach, I think you've done amazing so far. We're almost there to, to try to mend the the avenue between both the ag sector, which is where the change is happening, and the development side that's coming from Sioux Falls to in Hirschberg. 
I'm actually going to ask the board to consider a motion to table so we can maybe get a little bit farther as I move on. And Madam Chair, I do apologize, but I do have to keep going. Uh, <laughs> I'll apologize. for over an hour, so why stop you now? Yep. So <laughs> we're almost there, but one of the things that that really frustrates is what uh, Commissioner Aaron's alluded to is that um, this is an area that we get to decide what the land gets to be used for, but we don't get to decide how to do it. And that's extremely frustrating. And, um, and it's not the only area. So our options are not to do anything within this area of municipalities or try to mend this, this uh, error that we have. Uh, I hope Commissioner Ernst and I can work together and because we both are adamant about this being a, a, an issue. I sat on the commission with Commissioner Schmidt when we did joint jurisdiction with the city of Sioux Falls. It's not perfect, um, but I think it's helped um, move us forward. I hope we can do that with the other communities and I think we have to refine some things with the joint jurisdiction of the city of Sioux Falls. Um, but this is what I'm going to say to those areas that are in opposition of this. The area is going to change, and I don't know that I would want it to be in the control of anybody else at this point because I believe that he is that this party is trying to do the best that he can. Um, but that being said, what I don't like is that it's such a small track. <laughs> I actually prefer larger tracks because then we can see a larger picture. We look at this, and it is falls under the term spot zoning. If you're going to address, Madam Chair would have to recognize you. Madam Chair would have to recognize you first. Um, and uh, so we're we're getting through a lot of this, um, but I am going to motion to table this for one month, so that there might be an opportunity to get some of the drainage issues that have been raised at least. Uh, addressed a little more clearly with the uh, neighbors in the uh, in the vicinity. So I will end with that m motion to table for one month. Second, if we're even so we able to, to recognize draw, we'll draw that motion. motion. No, actually, uh, tabling. Okay. I think it's a privilege motion. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I don't know. So I'll second the motion then. Any further discussion? I have one. Go ahead. Well, in one month. While in one month, we like, <laughs> commissioners, they all like to talk too much. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say, tell Commissioner Aarons, uh, you know, when we talk about the frustration we have with our municipalities, amen. It would be nice to do this, and I hope you all understand that. But we won't in one month resolve the issue with the city of Harrisburg on who controls mm -hmm. what goes on. We won't. If we vote in favor of this in one month and you've addressed the drainage issues and Norm, you got some kind of magic formula to get the water out of your ground, eh, okay. But we still have not addressed the issue where Harrisburg is ultimately going to say what this thing is all about. And again, repeat, you got no representation. So consequently, we can do the best we can. So in one month, I hope you get this resolved because I'm ready to vote on that issue and take care of that. But I will support your uh, motion, Commissioner Poppins, for uh, table this for one month. <laughs> and I'm glad you made the motion because I've been accused of this many times myself. And <laughs> I, Madam Chair. I concur with Commissioner Schmidt because nothing is going to change <laughs> with the rezone request. We don't control anything. We don't have jurisdiction over the drainage. Tabling it, in my view, is makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, so I wasn't going to comment. Now I do have to. <laughs> <laughs> but commissioner, I yield to Commissioner Gibbon first. Yes. What what direction are we giving them? We're saying in a month, but this is what I'll address, if I may, Mr. Oh, okay. Commissioner. So, and and again, we don't have control with the city of Harrisburg. And we will not resolve what's going to be. Well, what they can do is they can hold. They held a meeting. They can address it with the neighbors without the municipality. Um, and figure it out. I, so, don't, I don't see why we need to hold up our vote, though. They can do that anyway, and they're going to need to do if it. We've, if we've approved it prior to them resolving any issues drainage-wise with the neighbors, then we don't have a choice at that point, and the city completely has 
once we've approved it or denied it, it's done. So I'm going to let Mr. Roach speak one more time, and then we're going <laughs> to vote okay. on this motion Thank to you, table, which I will be voting no on. <laughs> I am I am with uh, Commissioner Landine. Um, I am fully open, and I know Dan, my business partner, is fully open with working with Norm. We already have full approval with Myron going through his property. So with Myron Bramstead, there is zero issue with drainage and working with us. And I know farmers have a word that a handshake is a deal, and that's why we had so many people speak to mine and Dan's integrity. This is not something that we're going to walk away from. So you have my word on record that I'm willing to, and Dan is willing to work with Norman moving forward should you vote today and not table it because I just don't foresee 30 days, 45 days, 60 days helping this situation at all, knowing that Harrisburg has the end all be all on our drainage plan. Thank you. Well, we have a motion on the table to table this. So I suppose, uh, Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? No. Commissioner Landine? No. Motion carries. It's tabled. For one month, when would we be having? That would be June 22nd meeting. June 22nd meeting? I don't think you need to bring us anything unless you've got some more information about drainage. Um, I'm not going to take any more testimony um, in favor or against. This was our public hearing. Thank you for coming. It's a process. Uh, Madam so. Chair, I just want to tell the engineer that I have no doubt that they have the best engineering course at SDSU. My son went there. After that, it falls off. <laughs> I've, I've spoken, Madam Chair, a little bit about the fact that my daughter is going there, so I have to give them a little credit. <laughs> my husband's an engineer that graduated from there. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> we do believe that they can do some mathematics. Well, they're not an Augustana, yeah. let's face it. <laughs> All right. We're having fun. With We're you. moving Thank on. You. We're moving Thank on. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, June 22nd, we're going to make a decision on this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for Thank coming. You. It's a great deal. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll get it figured out. Okay. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Hey, you went the extra mile. Thank you. Norm, Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How you doing? None All like, right. None like emptying a room, Madam Chair. All right. I think we have somebody here to talk about our master drainage plan. <laughs> he looks familiar. Have we got this done yet? Toby, are you going to tee this up? Or? No, I think actually we got this morning. <laughs> well, I think you probably did. I think everybody's had an opportunity to look at the drainage plan. So, yes. um Uh, yes. All right. After that, yes, I am. <laughs> Go ahead. Seems to be a current topic. Well, here's the plan. It's got a good thump factor if you drop it. Um, I'm Kent Torby with Wank Associates out of Minneapolis. Our company was purchased by a company called Stantec, so our name will change over the next year or two. And I've been out here for two years, and we were under contract to work on a master drainage plan. And we are at the point of adoption, and this is a big deal. First one that is authorized under state statute, first one for the county, yes, you are authorized under state statute to manage drainage, and you meet as a drainage board. So the purpose of the plan then is once you have a plan, then you can get more in the game of development reviews, which you just heard about. 
So I will breeze through this fairly quickly. I know I've been in front of you a lot. And uh, so today I'll just focus on the plan itself and the structure if any of the citizens beam it up on the website. So again, why did we do a plan? You just heard it, changing landscape. And I just covered all three of those bullets, so I won't do it again. We'll get moving here. Um, what I always remind you is that this was built from the ground up. We didn't come out and say, here's a plan and how do you fit? We came out and heard your citizens and said, let's build a plan. We also have a technical committee, so engineers, public, sta public city staff can sit around the table and during the day we could bounce things off on a technical basis. You've seen this, this is our three-legged stool. We're on the left leg, process and planning. And a balanced drainage management requires three things. So here's the table of contents, and for the first year, we worked on items one through four. So that was 2019. Um, 2020, we kicked off and we got into the data. It's a good data set. We used a lot of other people's <coughs> data and implementation, doing capital projects. So in there, 19 was one through four. 20, we went hard on data and COVID hits, but it's in front of us in 2021. So the priority issues, and there were a lot of words from the residents, and we kind of did a word cloud, and we would bring in a lot of words into these six issues. For example, a clogged culvert, we put it under erosion or maintenance. So you might hear different words regarding drainage. Uh, they're covered in here. So this is, again, the last edition was chapter five and data. And I enjoy data and it helps that your plan, your process is backed up by data. If anybody has a question on why did we use this or that in a review, we can go back to this. And I like that it's not our data. You can see the different alphabet soup up there. There's a lot of good science out there, so let's use it. And a slide you've seen before is, as we heard about this from people, we have seen the 10-year average was up there. 100 years worth of data, and the last 10 years was significantly higher. So here's where we sit. Who manages it? What do we do now? We have floodplain ordinance. Then we were just through number two bullet, and then we have the feds and the state. So why do we do a plan? And you've heard this before, but I'll say it again. Maybe there's some citizens, because water doesn't care. That's my saying. And it goes where it wants to. It'll go downhill, and it crosses properties and cities' lines. But also in our county, it can be managed different. Maybe every raindrop doesn't matter. Here's a schematic we came up with. I think the one cutting through the circles, you know, that could be a Nine Mile Creek. And the gray is gray. Cities have subdivision authority. We get the drainage. And the gray is gray. We don't have much authority to go in there at the current time. <coughs> Cities typically manage their own, and we take care of the blue. So we will keep doing what we're doing. And with this plan, we can standardize drainage management based on engineering. And it always brings it down to me a little bit. There's a gentleman up here that owns ground and the engineer came out and said, there's no more water coming off of here after than before. You can pick engineering numbers to show that but it does not pass the smell test. And I just think it's not right for county residents or any residents to be told that. And also, so I'm a fan of counties getting in the game. 
otherwise you're this <laughs> private citizen has you know, otherwise it's a civil matter that one's just personal to me to hear somebody say that I have a question that brings up a point we sit up here not being engineers and engineers come in with data that said they can neutralize the drain drainage issue it won't run off any faster it won't run off any slower there won't be any impact how are we to decide if that's fact or not I, that's been a frustration for me for a long time because yep. it doesn't make any sense if you have a development and you have rooftops and you have driveways if you're a, if you're a residential development water is going to run off a heck of a lot faster yep. so from your estimation, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but just a well, quick caveat. It's exactly where we want to get, especially in the gray, but we will standardize what can be used. We, the county, will okay. standardize. You can use A, B, or C, but don't try E, F, and G. Okay. You can, and you submit, and we send it back, and then we get into staff applicant meetings, and I've been in them, called stuff killing development, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, okay. But our citizens' experience is we're getting more water from land use changes. And I don't think I'm out on a limb. So that's what we'll do day to day for the next 40 years. Keep that going. Standardize it. And so one city doesn't think another city's getting a break. And they, you're getting in the game, it's going to ruffle some feathers, but you're going to calm some stuff down over the long term. People will know we are fair or equally unfair, and I don't care how I'm viewed. We're just going to standardize it. So then we got into Chapter 6, and as we get into projects or the other leg of the stool, um, implementation helps us do that. It's help, it helps to have flooding projects or the topic listed in a plan. If some FEMA money pops up, they say, well, have you thought about this before? You say, yeah, we got it covered in six, and here's the table, and how about we could take a look at it? So it, it helps you um, when you move up the chain. In addition, it gives your citizens, if somebody had a localized drainage problem, we've kind of laid out, we'll approach the county and we'll see if it can fit on our CIP. We're not saying it's going to get funded, but it gives people a voice. It gives them a way to have their concern heard, but it doesn't automatically say we're going to engineer it. Get on the list. Education is one of the best. Any opportunity you have to promote, fund, help education while you're in the drainage game, that's one of the best. Probably generational. Let's get the next generation going on why we're in the game. Kent, uh, just for a second, if I may, Madam yep. Chair. Um, could you elaborate on what projects that we've implemented so far? So we've just started taking a look at a few projects. Um, but have we implemented anything? Because I've noticed that we're going through sloughs now that are completely dry. And a year ago, this is levity, sorry, folks, that <laughs> you've done a great job because we have no drainage issues in the county at all right now because it just won't rain. So Usually you kick this off, you hit a drought. So Perfect. <laughs> Should have done this three years we ago. We haven't done any projects. Earlier. I think you did Spring okay. Creek a few years ago, and that was multi-agency and things like that. So sorry, we haven't I was done, trying to be funny. We, we haven't done any well. projects. Nothing new with that. It failed. <laughs> um, and I just talked about that, letting somebody in in the door, give citizens a chance, townships, cities. We can all tackle things together. Here's what you're going through on a day-by-day, -day, and this is what's missing right now, is the detention calculations, the hatched area. They're dug down low, and again, the calculation shows, see, we have detention, but they're not effective in the spring melt, and when you have wet conditions, anything low is not effective. So we do the calculations so that detention storage, that hatched area, it's standardized, and 
the amount of water out of the pipe is what was coming off corn and beans right before that. But you got to build the bathtub big enough. We are either not building bathtubs now or the calculations are a little <coughs> bit cooked. So the bathtub's too small. And we will standardize that. So that's it. I kind of came through quick, but I just, I, again, I want to iterate. This is a big thing to adopt the first drainage plan for your county with what you're facing as far as the economy and land use changes, and that's not going away. So getting in the game, getting in the gray area is a big step. And as I said, there'll be some feathers that are ruffled, and um, but that's us as staff's business. The day-to-day -day business is us. Uh, you should not be having to answer technical questions or the fallout of approving something when somebody gave you a presentation that was not accurate. So that's not where you should be. And uh, that's the way it is. We just want to get that off your plate, down into staff and engineering but you need to start with a plan. You can't start with an ordinance. The plan gives you the right to have an ordinance. So that would be a next process. So I encourage you to get into it. Um, I don't know anything else other than to say to that. It <laughs> probably put you in an awkward situation with somebody, you know, I'm sure around budget time, you're not or you're under pressure to keep it tight and keep it low. So this will be a budget item, and we're already in the budget. So we'll keep her going. But I'm a fan of good planning. It lets us standardize tough topics. You standardize your roads. Standardize your drainage. Thank you, Kent. Okay. Um, I think this is a good first step in moving toward, you know, helping us make decisions regarding land utilization and uh, being able to rely on the engineers and staff to, um, to make recommendations to us that make sense with uh, what the drainage situation is in the county. So I would ask for a motion this, um, to adopt the 2021 Master Drainage Plan. This is a public hearing, yeah. Our, we are having a public hearing. Yes, All right. Well, who would like to speak in favor of it? Who would like to speak against it? Okay, then I'm gonna. Madam Chair, I move for oh, approval. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yep. Any further discussion or questions? Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Poppins. Uh, just for clarification, what real teeth does this have, Toby? as far as what developers or land use changes will have to be implemented? Uh, so as, as was mentioned, this is the framework for the beginning. Uh, this is any one. I mean, the next phase what we're currently starting to work on is an actual ordinance. Yes, so, so we'll we're, where are we at on that? That's, I mean, that's what will have the teeth is the actual ordinance. Correct. We have to wait till this is adopted, then we can formally start that process. Okay, thank you for that yep. clarification. I think adopting this plan is pretty similar to like when we adopted the transportation master plan. You know, we adopt it, we say it's our plan, but until we actually put it into force and effect, <coughs> the plan is just a plan. But I think we're required to do it anyway before we can get to the ordinance process. So. Anybody else have anything they want to ask or I, say? I was just going to comment, Madam Chair, is that uh, it, this is a lot like goal setting and so forth. I, th I think it's a good idea, and then you base your decisions based on what your goals are, and and uh, a plan in place, uh, obviously, <clears throat> you need to start somewhere, and that I think this would be very helpful. Thank you. Uh, Sean, do we have, we have motion to adopt? Times two. You want to call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Thanks. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landy? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Kent. Kent, thank you. Two, three years of work. So yeah, thank it was you. a long time coming. Thank you for letting us proceed. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item three, Julia. Uh, two items for your consideration this morning. The first is to hire Carter Thompson as a full-time system administrator with uh, the IT department at twenty-five fifty-seven per hour, effective today, the 25th of May. So moved. Second. Thank you. Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Um, and lastly um, is the resignation of Don Erickson for the Highway Department effective the 27th of May. So moved. Second. Thank you. Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, could I ask you a question? Sure. Um, could we move up? agenda item number 13 because I think I'm going to have to be leaving here fairly shortly in order to go to court in Sioux Falls and, and if you're open to that I'm open to answer Commissioner Poppins' questions or anybody else's for that matter. Um, I am open to that and in that what it, let's go um, let's go to items 12 and 13 because those are somewhat related to each other if we could. Um, I don't I'm going to address item 12, which I'm going to be really um, brief. Um, I'm essentially, I'm just going to read the email that I got uh, from the Minnehaha County um, commissioners. Um, it just says, uh, wanted to follow up on the request for Minnehaha County courtrooms to be used by the Lincoln County courts. The courthouse is a very specialized building with security that is compromised of certified law enforcement officers. In identifying a lease rate, we looked at the cost of maintaining the building along with the annualized cost of security. For reference, the 2020 maintenance, cleaning, and utility expenses of the courthouse was $547,000, uh, $547.59 to be exact. And the annualized cost of security for 2021 is $760,636 for a total cost of $1.307 million. Um, these costs do not include the cost of parking, insurance, or depreciation. Minnehaha County is offering a lease rate of $8,333 a month for an annual rate of $100,000. Uh, terms would be a one-year lease. If the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners is interested in pursuing a lease, please advise and we will draw up a lease. Um, so that is an item that we have on our agenda. There's, you know, nothing has been drawn up yet, um, but just wanted to gauge the interest of the commission and discuss that a little bit um, on whether that's something that we're interested in. I know we're getting you know, some cases have already been mandated to be moved to Minnehaha County, and um, this these monies are a short-term solution, but also a cost-effective solution in the short term um, as far as not having to retrofit and um, fit other spaces with smart courts and uh, things of that nature. And obviously the security is already in place in Sioux Falls and... Um, I believe this is something that our um, our presiding judge is also um, asking of us uh, to do. So I would just like to know everybody's thoughts on moving forward with that and having a um, having a our deputy state's attorneys, uh, uh, Mr. Golden, work with uh, the county commission in Sioux Falls to come up with a lease agreement. Commissioner Aarons, do you have anything you'd like to add about that? Yeah, n nobody ever likes to have their hand forced, but unfortunately, because of the growth and development that we've been talking about here for the last two hours this morning, we've got increased demands on our courthouse. And, uh, you know, I think we kind of informally went through the process of trying to figure out how much it would cost to retrofit another courtroom here. And... Uh, you know, we just did some back of the envelope math and the lease rate that we're being quoted here by Minnehaha County um, is probably fairly competitive with what it would have cost us in order to get a contractor here into the courthouse and, and uh, 
you know, take some existing offices and turn them into courtrooms. So it's probably pretty competitive. And uh, yeah, we, we're going to have to bite the bullet here for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I would say we probably move forward. I mean, I would probably uh, also ask Minnehaha County, though, um, since this wasn't a kind of forced upon us by the judiciary in a way or in a sense, whether or not uh, we can entertain this issue of uh, uh, using the court or you know building into the lease agreement the fact that the courtrooms may or not may may or may not be used all the time. So, for example, um, it's like if I rented you a house. Well, I'm going to want the lease check every month, right? But what if built into the lease, there's a situation where somebody else uses the house every weekend? Well, it would be unfair for me to have to pay for the lease if somebody else was using it. That's kind of how courtroom space works, too. This won't be dedicated courtroom space, is my guess. It's going to be ad hoc or as needed. And so if there are other cases that are taking place in the courtroom up there, um, wouldn't be entirely fair uh, for us to have to lease it based on the annualized numbers here. I mean, I understand the logic, but uh, maybe we ought to go back to Minnehaha County and say, yep, conceptually, uh, we can agree upon this. But we also need to take into consideration if there's going to be other Minnehaha County court cases that take place in those courtrooms. Because knowing how courtroom scheduling works, it, it's, it's chaotic. Uh, there's a lot of logistics involved. My hat goes off to the people up there in court admin who do all the scheduling. But my guess is those two courtrooms won't just be set aside for Lincoln County every single day of the week for the next year. So I think maybe out of fairness, we ought to just say, look, uh, there ought to be some, uh, something built into the lease agreement if other Minnehaha County is using the courtroom space as well at the same time. And maybe that's the happy medium here. But, well, and I, yeah, but, yeah, and I think that is going to need to be part yeah. of the discussions on what those terms look like um, as far as, you know, the space that we're going to have and how it's going to be allocated. Um, Commissioner um, Poppins, did you have anything you wanted to say on that issue? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with wanting to do um, what Commissioner Aarons as far as negotiating. The, the, the unfortunate part is we don't have much to negotiate with. Um, if we renovate space here, it may or may not be empty or used all the time um, I, I, I applaud you for wanting to do that what I what we risk is them retracting the offer and right now I don't know that we have any other options um, to really consider so anybody else have anything they'd like to add on that issue um, all right so let's call the question well we're not, we're not voting right oh, now we don't have a we don't have a contract. Well, did, you, did you have a motion? No. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful of the fact that they entertain the idea. You know, they wouldn't. They have their courtrooms are under um, siege as well with limited amount of time. I think we have to so thank the for judge them. for working, I think, diligently. Work with them. Yeah. Yeah, so. They are, and I think this is a very short-term bandage. So yep. that's going to take us into our next topic. But my what I'm gathering is you want us to go ahead and have our um, get, the details get the ball rolling and see if we can come up with an agreement that everybody's okay with. Please, Madam Chair. Um, so um, we'll, then we'll go on to item 13, which again, I think um, item 12 helps segue into that we need to get this going. We need to get a solution um, figured out. Um, I think the advisory committee has been very helpful. Um, you know, as far as looking at the issue, and I think what I gathered, at least from the last meeting, was that it, there is an emergency, and that's been identified. So since that emergency has been identified, I, I think we need to get some findings, and I think we need to get that part um, hopefully moving forward to a solution, because I feel like we're already at least a year, if not two, behind the eight ball on getting the courtrooms that we need. So with that, Commissioner Aarons. Yep. Or, well, I've got both of you here. Thank you. Um, so uh, where we're at is uh, Commissioner Schmidt and myself just finished up last week. Um, 
approving a survey that will go out to members of the committee, but also to members of the public. And then uh, we communicated what we thought the survey would look like to our Deputy State's Attorney, Bill Golden. And I believe that that survey is going to be sent out to the public here, or sent out to the members of the committee, as well as to the public shortly. And in speaking with uh, some members of the Cottage and County Commission up there in Watertown, where uh, this issue of courthouse improvements and a jail failed on three different votes, the biggest thing that was communicated to me was make sure you get the input of the public before you go into this so you can use that to craft your proposal moving forward. And then in doing some of the research, you know, I've, I've talking to county commissioners in South Carolina and Texas and Nebraska, they all gave uh, me the advice moving forward is get on the front end, get the information from your community as to what they want to see, and they suggested doing it through the use of a survey and put it on your website and just put it out to the public and have the public uh, fill out the survey so you can kind of figure out what's going on. One of the county commissioners down in Texas told me they got about uh, seven to 900 responses to their survey and, they, and then they took the results of that survey to each of the county commissioners and uh, they went out and held uh, meetings or talks with people in each of their districts using that survey as well as using the needs assessment. We've done a needs assessment. It's pretty clear. Um, the writing is on the wall. Uh, we need more courtroom space. What we don't know yet is uh, how that's going to take place. Remodel, um, get rid of the old courthouse, put a new one in its place, find a new location, uh, find a location inside of Canton, find a location to the north of this building, find a location to the west or east of this building, maybe, maybe a whole new location. I just had somebody call me last week uh, representing Darcy Johnson offering up uh, potential land here in Canton. So there's all kinds of people who are coming at us uh, making suggestions. And so um, it's good to hear. It's good to hear that people are invested in the process. But like I said, Commissioner Schmidt and I, we just finished up this survey. And so we want to push that out to the public now and find out what the public has to say about this. So that's where we're at today. Um, so just a couple of questions, Commissioner Aaron. So what's, I, I understand the survey has been done. I haven't seen a copy of it, but what's the turnaround time for getting this all done? Because it sounds like a time intensive project. And if there's somebody running it and who's, what's the cost of doing the survey? Uh, there's no cost because it's all internally controlled. We're going to put it on our uh, website and, uh, and then send it out to members of the committee. And then it can be just disseminated, you know, by members of the commission, members of the public. We can disseminate it through the media. But it's not like a, a mailer like you would send oh, to your house. Okay. Okay. It's, it's not a mailer. We don't put any stamps on it. It gets put on our website, and then we direct people to our website to go fill it out. So um, it's using all dedicated expenses from here in the courthouse, so it's completely free. I would think the turnaround time on that, I guess it's up to the wishes of the committee and the commission, but uh, we would probably want to, at a minimum, uh, have 30 days of uh, turnaround on that so that we can get a pretty good response from the public. And when do you think that that will be ready to go on the website? Bill, I'll put you on the spot here. <laughs> and they're going to go ahead and do a web-based um, survey and I think they were working on the questions and we may have to modify them just a little bit in order to get them to fit into that so hopefully it'll be done this week in fact I think it was done last night when I was doing closed hopping and blood tests so. all right and who who is going to be charged with looking at all of these let's say we get seven to nine hundred of them I mean, I, I know we're saying there's no out-of-pocket cost, but there is some cost because we've got to have somebody go through them, spend the time to go through them, and come up with some kind of a summary. Is that something the committee, advisory committee is going to do? Yes. Okay. 
All right, very well. Those are the, those were the only questions I had about that. And then I did have this on actually as uh, Commissioner Poppins' um, item. So Commissioner Poppins, what if anything do you have to add? Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank uh, Commissioner Schmidt, Commissioner Aarons, and the committee for working on this. Um, but in light of uh, our discussion on number twelve and and. Uh, fact that we are growing in a, in a statement or multiple statements from the judge saying that you know within five years we're we're going to need 10 courtrooms um, and that's highly functioning courtrooms uh, unfortunately we are la severely lacking and uh, and I can appreciate trying to be cautious but uh, we do have to expedite this process a little bit Commissioner Aarons, Commissioner Schmidt if you can um, because it doesn't happen overnight and I, I yet to hear anything that's going to carry us um, from today until the year whenever it is completed, whatever that project may or may not be. So in conjunction with the advisory committee, I think that the board should take um, a serious consideration to do a uh, three-year to five-year plan of how we develop uh, temporary or whatever may be courtrooms to fill the circuit's um, needs uh, because uh, 10 courtrooms doesn't uh, appear overnight. So thank you. I'll just add to that. I, I was in court actually with Judge, Judge Howman was the judge presiding on the case and she had mentioned to me that her updated numbers uh, for Lincoln County uh, court cases is actually up 50% from last year. Um, this was when I talked to her. It was probably about a week and a half ago. Anybody else have anything on that uh, and agenda as, item? And as we make those comments, I'm off to court. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Aarons. Anybody else have any comments? Just that, Madam Chair, I do believe that we need to put it on our agenda for the next meeting, um, that we get the personnel that we need to help us find temporary space because this is a one-year offer for Minneapolis County and it barely buys us uh, the next year so I would I would hope that this uh, arrangement for one year I'm sure they're trying to be as cautious as possible could be renewed because our options are, are extremely limited uh, outside of trying to uh, change the existing offices here, which I think is a short-term, ba very bad solution. The one thing that I think we have to do is decide on a comprehensive plan. We can look at the 10 years down the road, and I agree with you, you know, the numbers are there. I mean, you know, when you talk about population approaching 100,000 in another decade, you're just not the same county you were. You are a metropolitan county. so. What is our, what should be our basic need? Should we try to build, if we decide uh, we build, is it two courtrooms? Is that our immediate need? Or do we build four courtrooms and we do like uh, Sanford Hospital, you know, continue to be able to build up and up and up? And those are, those are the things that we don't have a choice, but then you come into the, the fact that we have to present to the public, okay, what's the cost going to be What's, how much taxes are going to be incurred by the average household, and to have them understand that we don't have a choice. I mean, it's not, we're just not dreaming this up. The court says you will have adequate space, or we will provide that space, and then we pay. So it isn't, uh, it isn't you know, <laughs> the, the wish list, that'd be too great. We have to provide, and I think the public has to understand that the county, that's just part of the Constitution, and the county has to understand we're going to do the best we can for the least amount of money we can so that the support can be generated when you put this to a, a vote. So, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Schmidt, has there been enough to, or any discussion that there's any doubt that we need 10 courtrooms that are functioning within five years? As, as the judge has indicated. I have not talked with Judge Hellman on that issue, Mike, so I can't answer that. Okay. So the, the committee hasn't we, had she that. She talked the last time she was here, I think she talked about eight to 10, 
And I don't know if the timeline was five years or, or longer. There's members of the committee, five to 10 years, I think that was. My understanding is that it was 10 years. And I mean, even this building that we're sitting in now was built in what, 2008? And it's already inadequate yep. uh, for our needs. And nobody expected that back in 2008. But here we are um, with the same type of problem that we had back then. And um, our court case is up 50% over last year. Um, so, you know, I think we need to look at the long term picture um, and build something that maybe is bigger than what we think we need, which obviously didn't happen in 2008, or maybe maybe we thought this was bigger than what we needed, and it would you know last long into the future, but it doesn't look like that's the case right now. So. You know, we talk about putting things on our website. So our check to Minnehaha County for jail last month was what? How much was that? Um, last Adam month, Auditor? I don't know, but I'd say average is what? 150 to 180, isn't what was it? Our, what was our bill last week, our last month? Do you want me to go pull the claims that you signed? No. I, can you give us a ballpark figure? 130, 140,000? Yeah, I'd say 130 to 180. It just average. It and that's depends. just for renting prisoner space. Really? <laughs> okay. I I would like a comment if if he'd be willing to offer or from our buildings and grounds superintendent what resources he would need to try to look at, to create space or find space um, if you were if he was told in a week to find three spaces for courtrooms outside of this either in or outside of this building what resources do you need to to work on that. It's not an easy task, I understand. And thank you for commenting, given that you're coming up. Since I didn't tell you, I was going to ask you that at a time. What an impossible question. <laughs> <laughs> ask me a, a question that it's, I, I'm not sure what kind of answer I would give you on that. I mean, do you need architectural mm -hmm. assistance? Do you need space coordinator assistance? What, 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 what would you need to try to find space or create space? I mean, it's, it's something I've been, you know, I'm always kind of looking at, but it's, uh, you know, it had to take all my direct focus for at least a week probably to resolve that question, you know, and and then the, you know, it, what happens is I, I seek out and I find space that's available and then I have to have input from all of you, so it's it's hard to say that anything could be accomplished in one week. No, I'm not asking for it to be developed, uh, excuse me, Madam Chair, I'm just asking, you know, personnel-wise or informational-wise, what would you need to, to have to make these decisions or suggestions? Well, Going back to a, a different architectural plan uh, uh, assistance or a plan space needs assistance or something like that, if, if or can you do it completely on your own? I, I mean, I think I could probably do it fairly well on my own with the assistance of Bill and uh, okay. You know, I'd, I'd reach out to architects for some advice, probably, but I think I could probably okay. research it on my own. Well, and I certainly don't think we can discount the judiciary and what they consider to be adequate, um, right, because that's right. what the statute requires. That, that's where I would have to have Bill's help with it, because, and I know Bill Bill's busy, too, so it, uh, I would definitely need to have somebody on the court side or state's attorney side that would know the you, uh, requirements for a courtroom. So. You also have to have the UJS on board because they're the, they provide all of the electronic, the IT, um, the smart court, and I know um, that our the current judiciary is not interested in spending a lot of money on those, um, you know, putting a Band-Aid on stuff um, as far as the cost to the UJS. Right. So um, that would have to be hat in hand with them and something that they would be also willing to spend money on, um, which right now I don't foresee being in this building. Basically, John, what I've been trying to ask you is we need to have a plan ready for when, from now until if and when something actually does get built 
that carries us past our current courtrooms and, and hopefully Minneapolis County will allow us to extend because if we're gonna build something, even remodel something, we're not gonna have it done in a year. So we, we really need to develop something that's carrying us for three years, I would think, until something long-term is, is figured out. So, um, and, and unless I'm not aware of it, we don't have that in place right now, do we? We do not. Thank you, um, John. Just Thanks, John. I know we're kind of going a little backwards here, but you're standing there, and we've been running a while. So, do you want to just um, touch on items 10 and 11 on the agenda, please? Let me go ahead and have we Lindy come in and the 4-H people. Then is she here? Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah, if you can do that, and then. I see her. I'm going to go ahead and let Wendy All right. fire this off, I guess. If uh, we're just going to head, go ahead and start on uh, achievement days. Okay. Um, do you want to lead off? Or do you sure. want? Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Wendy. Um, we have with us Katie Wester, who's the president of the Lincoln County Forage Leaders Association. Welcome. And then Chad Hazel, who's filling in for his brother Todd. <laughs> on that, and he's um, <laughs> also on our Building and Grounds Committee and the Foundation. Um, but we just wanted to talk to you about our 2021 Achievement Day plans. Uh, we had a leaders meeting last week um, to just discuss how we would hold the large animal shows um, with uh, no livestock facilities or water in Lenox. Um, the leaders um, thought that having the large animal shows in Canton would be the best option this year for safety of the animals. Um, as well as the kids, just to um, keep everybody in one place. Um, I don't know if you guys want to mention anything else or have questions for us. That makes sense. I mean, you got to have it. If you're going to have it, you got to have you got to have <laughs> the facilities that, to put yep. the animals and make sure that they're safe and watered and everything. So that makes sense to me. Um, so are they going to be showed there, Wendy? Are they going to be housed there and then? The judging will take place in the sale as, as well? Yes, so it would be, um, Mon the Achievement Day dates are July 25th through July 29th. So that's a Sunday through Thursday. On Sunday um, afternoon, evening, it'll be check-in the static exhibits in Lenox. Um, then Monday morning, we would finish check-in for the static ex exhibits in Lenox and then start our judging of those exhibits during the day. Um, livestock can start checking in over here um, from nine to one on Monday and then they would have their first shows Monday evening would be dairy cattle and goats and then sheep and goats and then Tuesday would be um, poultry and swine and then Wednesday would be beef round robin and the premium sale and then we would be done in Canton and go back over to Lenox to do um, rabbits and companion animals and then the clover bud show and tell and our 4-H um, barbecue all right mm -hmm. good plan great Sure. Yeah. So, thank you for the update. Sorry, Madam Chair. Go ahead. What will it take to get us so we're not bouncing back and forth? Money. John? <laughs> <laughs> money. How much money? What's the plan? All right. Well, um, our goal up until probably about a month ago was still to have everything in Lenox. Uh, with the hopes of having the show ring built already over there. It became apparent about a month ago that uh, just with between COVID and everything else and then the uh, material shortages for construction materials, it was just no way it could happen. So that's why we went back to the leaders and said, hey, we got to have a solution of how we can conduct achievement days one way or another. So yeah, I, we're at the point with IMEG that uh, I'm hoping they'll have plans that I can hand off to uh, different dirt work people, and we're hoping to get moving as quickly as possible on doing the dirt work. Um, and if that, in fact, happens, then we'll be looking at uh, moving forward with at least the building of the uh, uh, show ring facility 
as early as early next year. I, I'm sure you guys have seen with the budget request stuff, I did put a number in for that, even though we don't have full monies for that. But just like everything else in this uh, environment, prices of materials are going up, price of buildings going up, so it's making it a little more difficult for us. So, uh, so yes, uh, we need money. We need, uh, we need to have uh, some more support, but I, I think we're still there depending on what you, the commission, will allow us, the county, to sponsor as far as part of this uh, to hopefully have the show ring built by next summer and, and maybe what, more. And what was the estimated cost of the show ring? Okay, so um, a year and a half ago when we had roughly estimated the price of it, the show ring itself was going to be about 98000 um, After the... Um, COVID and the building shortages. A couple weeks ago, um, a ballpark figure was 185,000. So it, it's increased dramatically. I know. I have a sheet of plywood. It's fifty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents right now. <laughs> so. So that that's I, we were in a position to be able to pay for the the show ring as. Um, the fundraising foundation we had we were almost there I mean so close that we could give the go-ahead and we knew we'd have the money by the time it was put up now um, we have to reevaluate a few things and and uh, where are we at where are you, where are you guys at on raising funds for the shoring about 138 I believe well, that's come give or take a little yeah. bit and the cost is 188 100, yeah, 185, I think, is what the just an estimate for Morton That's, was. Is that, the, is that a finished product, or is that just the building materials? Or? That is put up. That's put up, okay. Yep. Um, and then there's a few infra infrastructure things as far as water and electricity and some concrete and things that are not in that. That's just for the basic show ring. We figured if we had to for a couple years, we could put some cattle under some tents and some sheep under some tents and make do as best we could, but um, that's kind of where it is right now. So we got to go out and find a couple of people that want to put their name on the show ring and uh, make this happen. Ideally, yes, that would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So one thing that came up with the engineer when I was meeting with him, that a number that I was not anticipating because I did have a number in for the dirt work but is the utility end of the world of putting the water supply lines in and tanks and whatnot in that, they're estimating to be a lot more expensive than I ever dreamed and I was closer to an $80,000 price range. John, why is that so expensive? Because I call Southeast, or the water district as well. Why is it so expensive? I, I'm not sure why the that lines number's are so there. high. I, I mean, it's, there's some of it's, when they're talking utilities, they're talking some of the drainage lines and everything to get the storm water away from the buildings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Most of what they're designing is all surface runoff, so there isn't a lot of that, but I'm not sure why that number's that high, other than basing it off of the, the experts, I guess. You know? John, is that water from the city of Lenox or South Lincoln Rural Water? It would be South Lincoln Rural Water. South Lincoln, yeah. Um, but that's, you know, you're talking to multiple different feed lines you know, uh, and you're also talking, I think, in that number is another septic system uh, for the future. You know, we'd want to put that in fairly quickly for the future growth of the shower house bathrooms for out there at that. Um, so that, you know, that by itself could be $25,000, you know, because if you had to put a mound system in. I mean, we've looked at different options, holding tanks. We've talked about different things. So that number is going to be variable, but... Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's part a large part of what would make it an eighty thousand dollar project. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to do your update? Yeah, I just I, it's been a while <laughs> since I've done a buildings and grounds update. Uh, uh, one of the things for as far as qu courthouse primary here, uh, um, we still have. We did the bat mitigation, and as far as I know, we have not had any bats come in except for one. That bat was uh, hopefully in here hibernating when we did the mitigation, and it just moved down, but uh, I guess that's to be seen. 
we have not cleaned up anything up there because uh, obviously, depending on what we do, it's kind of money that we're spending that that could be part of a project. But that said, we're looking at this project extending down the road a ways. So do we want, do you want me to reach out and see what it would take to get the bat guano cleaned up up there? And I think the only way to do it right would be to remove the insulation and. I think we have an obligation to look at that. I, I do have that number in next year's budget, but I would like to see us roll. The issue is going to become very apparent once we start getting heat, heat indexes at 100 and high humidities and then the bat guano smell will start showing up in the courthouse again. I think we have a duty and obligation to the people in those courtrooms to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll reach out to the, the three contractors I talked to last year and see what kind of number and I'll, I'll write a spec for doing it the way I'd like to see it done. Um, but otherwise, uh, everything here at the primary courthouse is going pretty well. We've, uh, 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 AC seems to be working pretty well. Um, we are doing, I've, I've got quite a bit of air conditioning improvements written into this year's budget. I'm trying to get at least the, uh, some of it scheduled here as soon as possible because of uh, uh, server room doesn't have any redundancy and we've had our uh, Liebert AC unit go down a couple times in the last month and it creates a lot of issues for uh, everything to be honest because it Jake has to really shut down things so I'm trying to push that project and uh, uh, this uh, communication room across the hallway to try to get those done as soon as possible but once again I'm running into a lot of issues with with uh, material costs and just getting contractors that are even willing to to do it before fall. Um, but so that you'll see some numbers probably coming through for uh, hopefully here soon to ask for approval. I'll just reach out and try to get three bids and we'll move forward with it that way. Um, as far as the highway building is concerned, uh, that, con or that project has also been delayed because of uh, material delays. Um, the the fan units are about two weeks out, but otherwise uh, everything else they're hoping will show up today. Um, everything's been, they're pretty much at a point where they're ready for the new equipment to be installed, but they've, uh, they've done everything that they could probably do up until this point. Um, so th that's about where we're at with that. And uh, um, I was gonna lead into uh, the transfer station, but uh, I, I see that uh, Commissioner Gibbons has something on the, there for that already, so I, I, I don't really have any major updates with that other than just was curious where we were at with how we want to proceed. And part of that, I, I have not, uh, we want to, uh, uh, sur we've surplused all the equipment, but we want to uh, sell off the major equipment like the, the trucks and everything. But I felt like I should probably not move forward with that until we really know what we're gonna do with the, the property because if they, somebody turn around and buys it for uh, transfer, station, or transfer station type facility again, they might want the equipment. So I thought it might be kind of silly to sell the equipment. But. Well, since we're on that topic, um, our agenda item number six is uh, the surplus transfer station property. So um, I, I do have one, I guess. Yeah, go be, ahead. Uh, before we move into that. Sure. So uh, another thing, if you guys looked at my budget request for next year, we have the existing property that we've taken in and uh, uh, the county took over as tax deed out by the airport. Um, if you're familiar with it, it's a house that's on the north end of the airport. Um, I do want to just throw it out there that I, we're going to go in there, the, uh, uh, John Hansen and Tom and I, we're going to try to get it cleaned up as far as the, the grass and make it to where it's not, uh, you know, basically to try to bring it in within uh, uh, not being a nuisance property. Um, that said, I want you guys to be aware that uh, it's kind of become a dumping ground a little bit. Um, the building's pretty much open and unsecure and people throwing mattresses and stuff like that in there. We've got a lot of remnant tires being dumped in there. Now, is this from people occupying space around there? I don't know, but it's gonna become a, a problem to us. We're still in litigation on that, so you're not going to go over there. Oh, all right, Never mind about that then. Postpone. All right, um, I guess that's it. 
we can move on to the transfer station now. Yeah, let's talk about the transfer station. Um, Commissioner Gibbon, you want to tee that? Yes, I, I do. Um, <clears throat> as you realize, we surplus the transfer station a few meetings back. Um, Commissioner Schmidt and I went ahead and uh, had the property appraised. Uh, a written appraisal was given to our, our county auditor in regard to that. Uh, I have been approached uh, the past 10 days by someone, a Lincoln County resident who is interested uh, in that property. He asked me if this property um, was either for sale or for lease. Uh, as you can see right now, we're currently leasing this property right now. But anyway, uh, if the commission is interested at all in finding out either through sealed bids or through um, either a public auction what we can get for this property, uh, I, I know that there is interest in it. And I think that um, obviously there's probably more than one individual too that might be interested in this. So I guess. Uh, I guess uh, what my thoughts were that uh, maybe this is something that we should do with a public auction and that we should possibly um, you know, have a reserve in mind of what we would like to get for this property. And so I guess uh, since uh, this is where we're at with it, even though I still continue to get comments and phone calls from those that are wishing that we would bring it back into the budget for next year, uh, I know that uh, the support isn't there. and so. Uh, maybe this is a, a time to move this property. And so I guess I would like to move that we uh, put it up for a public auction. Other commissioners, uh, thoughts? Was that a motion? Uh, it's that a motion. will be a motion. Or you can second it. I don't care as long as he has a second yeah. so we can talk about it. Well, I second the motion. So is that is that property already been surplused? It's yes. already surplus. Has it been appraised? Yep. We have that done. Okay. You know, the best way to find out what the value of it is is to put it up for a public auction. You can always protect. You can protect the thing so it doesn't sell for, you know, a, a, a pittance of what you think it's worth or your assessed value. But you will find out what the public, yeah, what it's worth uh, by having a competitive bid. Do we need to get some idea of cost or proposals on that, on what the fees are going to be. For a public auction, we do it. We're going to do it here. But that would, our normal public auction. Well, doesn't All the right. auditor do that on the front step? And she's ecstatic about doing that. <laughs> I can do it. I can tell by the look on her face how ecstatic she is. Um, <laughs> just, just to throw it out there, we've talked about doing public auctions before. And we found when we sold the highway building, the old highway building, our best, well, previous commissioners discussed that the best option was to list it with a realtor instead of public auction. I don't know if that would be a better option, especially uh, if we've already got people that have interest in it. You totally leave. I guess I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. What's, what are you looking for, Mark? Uh, what do we currently have the property zoned as? I'm sorry, what was your question? What is the property currently zoned as? Is our zoning correct for the type of facility that, because this has been there, did we ever John, take action to... I'm looking right now. I don't know. We may John, need to question. clarify the zoning on it. Maybe not. Don't. Madam Auditor, could, is it possible to have one of our... Um, benevolent auctioneers that are in Lincoln County just to volunteer their services? Because they certainly come to the 4-H and not only do they provide, you know, great <coughs> theater, but I don't know, Wendy, they've always volunteered their services. West but that's, there's probably a difference between 4-H and selling a property. Yeah, I, I don't think well, that it's... <coughs> I got ideas on that too, but I don't know say anything, but... I would actually us pref prefer to uh, do an RFP from um, um, real estate agents that deal in commercial real estate to take a look at this and uh, present an option versus doing an auction in our steps. Um, the market is ridiculous right now for if this is zoned 
commercial or light industrial, which it should be based on its previous use. And Sean's going to tell us. It is zoned light industrial. There you go. So I think there will be a significant interest in that. And I, at the moment, I would prefer um, not to say that auctioning is not uh, an adequate way of doing it. But if we're looking at trying to maximize the dollars back to the taxpayers, uh, I do believe um, using an agent um, would be the most beneficial. But that's my thought. What's a realtor take for percentage on, on selling? Can I have a just a general comment on that or percentages? <laughs> that's what their RFP is for. Yeah. So, but it'll range from five to six, probably percentage. Yeah. Um, but that again is part of the RFP. So does anybody want to amend? You want to amend the motion? I the, I yield to the two that if they would prefer to stick with the auction, I'm good with that as well. So we're going to stick with the auction. I'm I, I'm fine with the auction, but uh, I I don't know. Do I have a second? Yeah, you had a second. Okay. Yeah, I had a I, second. Yeah, there was a second. So, I, we, can I, can, if you have an auction, rather than having it on the front step of the county, why can't we advertise that 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 would be sold at the premises itself, where you have the auction, where people come and see, they look at the building, they look at the <coughs> facilities, so it's an auction, a regular auction on site. I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't. Would that be okay? Yeah, we so do we're going to put this out for what RFP for somebody to do the auction or are we going to no, have so our auditor do it? Can we have the same person that appraised it do the auction? Yeah. Or is that a conflict of interest? Who mm. appraised it? Westra. Uh, Westra. I think then we'd still have to go back to an I, RFP. I was going to say, I think if we're going to have hire somebody to do the auctioneer, then we'd have to do the RFP. Well, I, well that's my that's my point. Yep. <laughs> if yep. we're going to do it, we're going to have to do an RFP, whether it's a realtor or an auction house. It's a piece of property that will need to be advertised properly, whether you do an auctioneer, hired auctioneer, or a real estate agent, to make sure that the you know everything. What if we put out RFPs for auctioneers and realtors? and seen which option came out better and then decided from that. Because you're, I mean, we don't know. The realtors might do 6%, the auctioneers might do 8%. So. Right. Um, commissioners, you made the motions. Do you want to add that or change your motion? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I think it's a good suggestion. So, so thank you, Madam Auditor. Yes. Sean, are you clear on what the motion is? So the motion is to um, set out RFP for auction or real estate agent for the transfer station land. For the Correct. purpose of selling the transfer. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Um, Sean, will you go ahead and call the roll, please? Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, we're circling back to item five. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Um, as you can see, the uh, <coughs> Marvitsky Airport uh, Board, which is, um, I guess, uh, we were assigned, Commissioner Poppins and I, to this at the beginning of the year. And as you can see, on April 13th, uh, an advisory committee was created. We took a look at different um, areas of the Marvinsky Airport, keeping in mind, uh, I guess, the uh, people that are involved with the airport, particularly the, the people that run the airport, uh, those that are business flyers out of it, recreational flyers, uh, in its regard to its location with the City of T. Uh, landowners nearby, those in economic development, and of course those that are hangar tenants. And I guess um, the thing that we looked at, and it's, it's nice to see that we have a lot of interest of those people in regard to our airport, um, along with the consultants that we have out of Aberdeen, 
uh, that these uh, individuals, as you can see, applied to be part of this committee to take a look at our current needs and also our needs in the future. And uh, it looks like um, uh, we've had several that have uh, sent in letters, which is, which is uh, very encouraging, I think approximately 20. We were hoping to get, I think, one maybe in each particular area. So I think that uh, that is something that uh, has been encouraging. I, I, I would encourage that uh, we create this committee, uh, that we do it, and of course, obviously, here at the courthouse, here at the uh, commissioner's room, and uh, I think any time that you can get open discussion, communication uh, with all involved, what direction we need to go, whether it be with hangar space, uh, the renters of hangars and so forth, or if it's uh, expansion or taking a look at the terminal itself, are all positive things. And so um, I'm very uh, supportive of uh, the, the, the track that we're on right now. I guess um, it, with that in regard, uh, I guess we could do a couple of things. We could uh, look at uh, the people that applied and, and select one from each area or that we could include everybody, which, you know, as we approach uh, the summer season, trying to get everybody involved is not going to be easy anyway. So um, maybe the more the better so that we do get possibly a quorum. So anyway, uh, that's where we're at at that particular process, and I know we'll need the help with our consultants from Aberdeen as well. But uh, basically, um, I, I'm glad that we've had the number of applicants that we have that want to be part of this committee. Uh, uh -huh. I guess at this particular time, I don't know, Commissioner Poppins, did you want to add anything or not? Uh, the one aspect, and you and I spoke with it um, about it the other day, was I did not know that we had uh, a criteria of a landowner that is not a interested party in the airport itself, just general taxpayer. Um, I should say not a landowner necessarily, but from the county to have an outside perspective for um, the airport. That, and that makes sense to me as well. I, I guess what makes sense on something like this, Commissioner Poppins, you've historically handled the, the airport, um, airport uh, things as they arise, and Commissioner Gibbon, um, can the two of you work together to go through your um, list of go through the people that did apply and come up with um, members that you can agree on appointing. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And then if yeah. you want um, somebody else that's not um, directly related to the airport, uh, maybe discuss that and come up with a recommendation. Sure. Thank and you, I Madam think Chair. I'm, I'm, I'm good at, uh, at, at, I shouldn't say I'm good, but I'm, I'm uh, supportive of, of uh, moving on this because I think we have a lot of people that are interested in wondering what our next step is, particularly with with the hangar and the hangar renter space. Sure. So I just ask that the two of you meet and come up with a, an agreed-upon list of people for the committee. Okay. Very Thank good. you. Thank you. And then we have item 7, lease of county property at the northwest corner of South Main and East 7th Street in Canton. The, Sherry. <clears throat> sorry. The reason that we have this on the agenda is back in March, we extended the DOT land lease. Um, the tenant rents both that place and the corner lot here in Canton thought they were both getting extended. So what we want to do or what he would like to have happen is just extend this one for the corner lot as the same as his other one, which would expire 331-2022. All right. You've heard the request. Anybody want to make a motion on Move that? Move for approval, Madam Chair. And same same amount and everything? Yeah, yep, yep. 90 All right. a month. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, Sean, will you call the roll? Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Um, we had moved item eight to the bottom of the agenda, so I'm going to go to item nine, was um, discussion of regulation of the medical um, cannabis. Attorney Golden is going to tee that up for us. Thank you. We have had two... Uh, we have an initiative for medical marijuana that has passed and is going to go into effect in July. We also have Amendment A that becomes part of the Constitution for recreational marijuana, which 
currently sits at the Supreme Court, and so we're waiting to see whether or not it's going to be deemed constitutional or not. The issue that I want to bring in front of the commission is that both of them give you the ability to do some regulations of retail, of manufacturing, of growth, and testing facilities. And so the medical marijuana specifically gives you the ability to do licensing. Amendment A also goes ahead and talks about licensing issues. And so um, I have put together, and I think I provide to uh, Commissioner Schmidt, a ordinance that has been going around the state and has been worked on for a licensing scheme for uh, marijuana. It's something that's going to wind up um, being here in the county one way or another or up in Sioux Falls. And so need some direction on how you would like to do that. I've also been contacted by Minnehaha County and by Sioux Falls that they have a joint task force that they'd like to put together. I was just emailed and told that they have adopted um, a joint task force and they're asking Lincoln County to join into it yes. so that there could be some um, cooperation and consistency in what actually gets put in place. So I have a copy of what they had sent down. Public copy, but there's. Are they wanting like? Are they wanting you want? Who are they wanting? Anybody in particular? Madam Chair, I have. I uh, agree. Madam Chair should do it. I have, I have no problem doing it. I will join you because I've been in contact with several of the commissioners, and several of the city uh, officials city council people, and I think it's very fundamental that we be part of this so we have some uniform planning that goes forward so that we don't, the, the ordinance that Bill sent to us, if you've read it, is very comprehensive, and I commend him for his efforts on that. I think that's one of the uh, best ones, and just for public disclosure, Bill, I sent that ordinance that you drafted as a copy to Yankton County as well because they are putting one forward and so is Union County. And, you know, I got thinking maybe this whole Southeast District would have been better off if they would have planned together so you would have had uniformity and Union, Clay, Yankton, Minnehaha, Lincoln, you know, Turner, and Bonham. But um, having not have that, uh, I think it's important that we are part of the uh, city and the two counties. So, Madam Chair, I will be happy to join you as a participant. All right. Is that all you needed? Um, that is in just the other is just to give you advice that planning and zoning is going to be bringing an ordinance forward as well. And so we're trying to coordinate between the two. Um, I believe the other jurisdictions are looking at, um, it's not a moratorium, but putting on so that no permits or um, licensing will occur until the Department of Health has their regulations out. They've circulated a portion of those regulations, but it's very difficult when we're working within the framework that we have to be within the department's rules, but they haven't adopted them yet. So. And our time frame is July 1st for when this goes into effect. And so there is a concern that there won't be any regulations in place and people will start pulling permits. And then they will be able to go ahead and open up and possibly cultivate marijuana legally in the county. But so the, the state's requiring a state application, correct? They requires a state application. And that has to be completed by um, October 20 or, yeah, October 29th. The application, yes. I mean, they haven't come up with the actual application yet, is that? They haven't come up with the rules so they can have an application. All right. They're working on that. But having a facility should, the requirement of the application and state approval should precede county approving something of this nature, in your opinion? That is going to be ripe for litigation is what my concern is, is that whether or not we have something in place, if somebody comes in, pulls a permit, opens up retail, or sets up their own operation, and we don't have any regulations on it, 
because it becomes possible on July 1st, and then there's an argument about grandfathering it in. All so right. those are the concerns that um, the three different entities are talking about. And I don't know that it's not worthwhile starting to talk to T in Harrisburg as well, because um, they may be primed locations where people want to open up shops as well. So I would ask for action on the uh, joint task force. I would still move. For? Uh, participation. For participation. For right. Joining the task force. Yes, and I think we've, we're agreeable to doing that. So you've made your motion. Is there a second? Second. We've got a motion and a second. Sean, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Gibbon? No. Commissioner Poppin? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Um, Bill, were we going to need an executive session today at all? Um, yes. We are going to move. Sherry, do you want us to do that first, or do you want to do your budget discussion first? Do you want to do it? Uh, do you need to get things set up, or are you ready to roll? Um, were you planning on staying here for the budget discussion, or do you need to get going? I think I think we're gonna let's handle the executive session first, and then we'll handle the budget. Good plan. Good. Madam Chair, um, I would move to go in executive session under pending litigation. What are we dealing with? Contracts. 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 Thank contracts you. it is. Do I have a second to go into executive session for second. contracts? Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Sean. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. We're in executive session. I'm out of executive session. So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Thank you, Sean. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. All right. Sherry. Budget. Yay. Move for approval. So we're not going over oh. it. What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. So I'm gonna get my I'm gonna start using this gavel pretty soon. <laughs> okay, so we're not actually going over the number numbers these are the preliminary what we've all pulled together I'm gonna run through what how I'm doing it and see what you guys think we are gonna have to have further budget discussions though um, to go over line items <laughs> all right so we went through the timeline and we know that we've got till July 15th to do any opt-outs um, <coughs> September 17th is still my goal for the public hearing uh, these are the differences. So 2020, we had 20, and this basically is over the general fund. Um, 20 million, 38,793 for 2020. It increased by 3.947% from 21, or from 20 to 2021. And then you see the three different types per the different colas that we put in. This is the change in the general fund cash over the years. You'll notice that in 18 and 19 is the only time that the um, change in cash was below, and that is because of the airport purchase and the Delaware project. The just timing difference in the Delaware project, not that we spent the money. It Del was just Delaware Pre or Delaware? Del is it Delaware? Delaware. It is Delaware. 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 Yeah, the Dendalk. Yep. Yep. You had me confused. Dairy, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. So. The approach that I'm taking for the revenue is I'm going to trend over the last three years what we received in revenue. Um, the only exception is I'm obviously I'm going to take out the CARES Act money because otherwise we'd really it would be over budgeted. So this is kind of what we've done over the past since 2015. The bottom number is the budget. The top number is the actual. So you can see that Lincoln County's pretty conservative on 
how they budget. I'm trying to get the numbers to come closer together though. Um, all right, so this is what we've got for general fund revenues overall. For the taxes, charge, or chain, charges for goods and service, intergovernmental revenue, miscellaneous revenue, fines and for forfeits, and license and permits. So you kind of see the trend that's been going on with this. Um, I'm, right now I've got an increase in general fund revenue of 7.761%. A lot of that comes from the property taxes. I've done a 4.2% budget. That's with a 1.20 CPI, which is set by the state and doing a three-year average of 3% of growth. And I think this number is gonna be low. I think we're gonna have more growth, hopefully. So this is the general fund property tax statistics. So that just shows you where I got the 3% for the growth. License and permits. Um, you look at the percent increase from 21 to 22 and it looks high. But if you go back over the years, you'll see that they are, it's not out of line to do the budget request of 214,000. At this point, as of May 18th, we are 85% of the budget of 174,600 <coughs> that we budgeted for 2021. So we are collecting more in license and permits than we have budgeted for previously. Um, I increased the intergovernment number by the three year average. So I don't think it's gonna be out of line. It, it, a bump up a little bit, but I still, I think we're gonna be all right with that. Fine, fine and forfeitures, if I would have done the three year average on that, it would have been 85, 100. But with the, the way it's flexed so much over the years, I just decided to be conservative and do it at 70,000. Miscellaneous revenue. Um, this is the final revenue type. The general fund, I did increase this from last year budget, but I went through the contracts that we have for rents and recorded them at the face value. I did also jump the interest revenue up and pretty confident of the increasing on that. And you'll notice that um, it is still not trended we have some significant increases in 2017. We had Spring Creek Tributary, where we recouped a lot of our expenditures there that weren't accounted for. And we sold the old highway shop in 2018. That's the significant increases there. <clears throat> so now we're going into the expenditures. Um, the first one is gonna be using the 2.0 COLA. And granted, these numbers are just what the budget, or the departments have requested, like I haven't gone through what you guys, I'd rather sit down and talk to you about where we think the commissioner's budget and everything else is going. I did small increases on the commissioner's budget just so that we'd have the numbers in here and get a general idea of what they're looking at. Um, but overall, the total expenses for the general fund is gonna be 21,749,709 at 2.0. 121,782,129 at 2.5 and 21,835,625 at 3.25. The next one is the, the next three are gonna then be the preliminary means of finance. So the magic word there at the bottom is cash applied. Cash applied just means that we're taking the money that we currently have in the account and using it to cover the bills that we're saying that we're requesting. So I've used a lot of like the million dollars for the highway is what they've used for cash applied over the last few years. Um, otherwise, the rest of them are just balances that they have in there. Same thing on that one. Um, all right, so this is the fun one. Um, you'll see on top is the projected revenues. That's gonna be the same no matter what we do for the cost of living. Then we do, 5% of appropriations. So again, it's gonna be differences with the different amounts of the COLA. And up at top, we just have the step increases. I don't have any numbers in there for the cost of living. Um, but if you come down then, we do, oh, I lied. Up at the top, I do have the cost of living 
and the step increases included in the total appropriations. So you'll see the differences in there. The next set is the new requests. So we've got new hires that we're requesting and also new equipment to train the new, and training for the new hires. That brings you down to the additional 5% required for the new, and then this bottom one here is the budget shortfall. I use the recommended cash apply to $5 million. Um, if you look back over the last three years, that's lower than what you've had for cash applied. So there's where our budget shortfall is on all the different deals using the recommended cash applied. And that is it. Leave that one up, would you, Sharon? I will. Thank you. And like I said, I think we can maybe go through and fine tune some of the budget numbers. I don't think they're gonna be significant changes. They possibly could be. Um, you know, the one, the biggest budgets, of course, are gonna be the sheriff, the highway, and um, building and grounds. Uh, so I think you definitely are gonna wanna go through those ones because they've got more project planning and things like that, with the exception of the sheriff, he doesn't really have projects, but. And the new hires, they encompass sheriff's office and state's attorney and planning and zoning. Sherry, if, if on that bottom line where we show two, two and a half, or three and a, a quarter, how much difference would you say that if you li limited that three and a quarter to three? Just come on. This is why <laughs> this is why we went through this before. And I could divide I could divide, you know, yeah, that but half percent in there. That's I mean, not gonna make enough about, of a difference. So it's about thirty thousand. It's insignificant. It's it, very insignificant, I mean, but that's why we that's went. That's my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I thought you were going to start no, 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 doing no, it by no, the quarters, no. and I'm like, no, no let's sorry. let's not do that this year. I mean, I'm looking at trying to figure this out, but it's really very insignificant when you look at a budget of $20 million plus dollars, mm -hmm. you know. It's 56000 by the way. 56 So the cost of living adjustment, that 2% and 2.5 and 3.25, that also, and does that include the step in the salaries as well? Then yep. two point two. Yep. So then it's really a four point two or a well, no, 4. you have to. Or? It's a two percent cost of living, and the step is different. They're two totally different things. So, yeah, but yes, it does include. <laughs> if you qualify for the two and a half percent step, then yes, it would include it in there. Step is in these yep. calculations. Yep. Thank you. Well, if you read the paper lately and you figure out what they're paying for entry-level positions all across the South Dakota, uh, salaries are definitely rising. Can you bring up the chart that had the cash fund and mm -hmm. it's over a series of years what it's been? Uh, Which one are we looking at? Cash. Well, I, I shared oh. with you Yesterday, Commissioner Schmidt, I don't think of, in, in my world too, I, I don't see any school district in this county that has given staff more than a 3.5% increase. Then that might change because all the school districts in this state are getting a lot of money with no restrictions on it. So I think they've already settled from what I've talked to. I, I don't know. I'm just saying that if the teachers don't get a then they, it's different than us. I know it's different, but I, I, I agree with Commissioner Schmidt that there's a lot of jobs that people are looking for, but at the same time, um, you know, some of those jobs in, in, entail working nights and evenings and weekends and holidays. For the report, Sherry. Sherry, this is very good. Yep. Well, thanks. Right, let's say that. That's very good. Very comprehensive. I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you. We got colors and. <laughs> That's all it takes. No. <laughs> Sherry, I'm so sorry. Sherry, go back um, to revenue uh, on your chart once. 
Oh, that that's a good one. That one is an excellent one because it does show you the indication. But go back to our history once, because I think that's that's, that's, one? that's pretty telling on how conservative we have always been. We have been very conservative, and if the taxpayers really looked at that, our budget crunching has always been well within reason. We haven't been, uh, and to our own thing, which we should, we should, uh, taxpayers may or may not appreciate, we have not had an opt out. You name me a county in our district that has not had an opt out. And they have had several. I don't care if you're talking Turner, Union, Clay, you talk anybody, they have all had opt outs. We in Lincoln County have never had an opt out. Well, are we going to need one? Yes, we are. But up until this point, we can look back with pride that we have been very, very, uh, I think, uh, judicious in taxpayer dollars and spending them wisely. Your, your three new hires were uh, possible were planning and zoning, state's attorney, and what was the third one? The sheriff's office. Yeah. Okay. There's four total new positions requested. Okay. With that, Madam Chair, thank you, Sherry, but I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Sherry?